Mending Hearts in Pine Haven by Laura Abbott. Chapter One. The crisp autumn breeze tousled Lily's long blonde hair as she hurried toward the Pine Haven Medical Clinic, leaves crunching beneath her feet. The early morning sun cast warm rays on the small town clinic, its modest brick facade welcoming patients and staff alike. Lily much preferred this place to the bustle of Java Joy, her family's coffee shop. Here was where she belonged, or so she hoped. Morning, Lily. Jenna, one of their nurses, called out from the doorway, a steaming cup of coffee in her hand. Good morning, Lily replied with an infectious smile, her optimism shining like the golden hues of the foliage around them. The clinic always held a current of excitement, reminding her that she was one step closer to her dream of one day becoming a registered nurse. For now, though, she had her role as a receptionist, which she embraced wholeheartedly. Hey there. Dion, their PA, glanced up from scanning through a patient's chart. Ready for another day in paradise? Always. I've got my game face on, Lily said with a wink as she took her position behind the reception desk. She knew that her sunny disposition brought a sense of ease to both the staff and their patients. It was something she took pride in, even if it sometimes felt like a far cry from her ultimate goal of nursing school. Did you catch the latest episode of Medicine and Mayhem last night? Asked Linda, the clinic's other receptionist, as she joined Lily at the desk. Of course. But can you believe what happened to Dr. Heartthrob? I mean, really? Ugh, don't get me started, Linda groaned, rolling her eyes dramatically. But at least we have our own little drama to keep us entertained here. True, Lily agreed her laughter bubbling up once more. She loved the camaraderie among her co-workers. It made even the most challenging days feel lighter and more manageable. As she settled into her routine, checking messages and preparing for the day's appointments, she took a moment to reflect on her circumstances. Living with her parents had its challenges, but it also meant that she was always surrounded by love and support. And while her sister Sophia had taken over the family coffee shop, Freeing Lily up to pursue her own dreams, there was still a part of her that felt trapped, unable to fully spread her wings. But as Lily greeted each patient with a warm smile and an attentive ear, she reminded herself that this was just one step on her journey. One day, she would achieve her dream of nursing school, and until then, she would continue to bring light and joy to the lives of those around her in Pine Haven. Good morning, Dr. Halston. Lily grinned at the clinic's beloved physician as she waddled into the reception area with her round, pregnant belly leading the way. Morning, Lily. Dr. Megan Halston flashed her a warm but tired-looking smile. She was in the final days of her first pregnancy, and she didn't hide the fact that she was more than ready to get that baby out of her. How are you today? Fantastic, as always. And how about you? Any progress on the baby front? Still waiting, Megan sighed, placing a protective hand on her belly. But I'm sure he'll make his grand entrance soon enough. Can't wait to meet him, Lily beamed at the thought of the newest addition to the Pinehaven family. I can't wait either. These last few weeks are always the hardest. Thankfully, I've got work to distract me, Dr. Halston announced playfully. Speaking of, looks like the crowd is coming now. Lily saluted before turning her attention back to her desk and the elderly gentleman approaching her desk. Good morning, Mr. Roberts. How are you feeling today? Uh, not too bad, dear. These old bones aren't what they used to be, but Dr. Halston keeps me going, he replied, his cane tapping lightly on the linoleum floor. Dr. Halston is truly a treasure, Lily agreed as she efficiently checked him in for his appointment. The people of Pine Haven are so lucky to have her. Indeed we are. Mr. Roberts nodded, then shuffled off toward the waiting area. Lily smiled as she watched the old man make his way to the chairs. She loved seeing the familiar faces of Pinehaven come through those clinic doors each day. It made her feel like she was part of something special, this little town taking care of its own. As she finished up some paperwork, her coworker Sarah breezed in looking slightly frazzled. Her curly red hair was escaping its ponytail, and the sleeves of her pink scrubs were pushed up haphazardly. Morning, Lily, 
Sorry I'm late, had to drop the kids off at school, and you know how crazy mornings can be, she said, catching her breath. No worries at all. I totally get it. She thought about her own morning routine, showering in the cramped upstairs bathroom at her parents' house. Before grabbing a quick breakfast downstairs in the kitchen, it wasn't ideal, but she was grateful to have a roof over her head while she saved up money working at the clinic. I'll grab us some coffee. Looks like we could both use a pick-me-up. Sarah chuckled, heading toward the break room. You're the best, Lily called after her friend. She loved that they looked out for each other. It made the chaos of the clinic so much easier to handle. Sarah returned a few minutes later with two steaming mugs of coffee, handing one to Lily. Thanks, I really needed this today, Lily said gratefully as she wrapped her hands around the warm ceramic. Of course, Mondays can be rough for us all. Lily took a long sip, letting the rich flavor warm her up. She daydreamed about finally being able to move out on her own, maybe get a cute little apartment close to the clinic. She imagined decorating it with cozy furniture, photos on the walls, and fresh flowers on the kitchen table. Her thoughts were interrupted by the ding of the front door. Lily quickly composed herself and put on a bright smile to greet the elderly couple entering the clinic. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. James. Here for your checkup? Lily asked warmly as she checked them in. That's right, dear, Mrs. James said. You know Harold likes to stay on top of things. Lily and Sarah exchanged an amused glance. The James couple bickered lightheartedly as Lily handed them their paperwork and directed them to the waiting area. Then she settled back in at the front desk, straightening a stack of files. Out of the corner of her eye, she noticed Dr. Halston waddle out from the back. Lily smiled, seeing the doctor's huge pregnant belly. Would you mind clearing my schedule for this afternoon? She rubbed her lower back. Sure, there's not too much on the schedule today anyway. You feeling all right? Absolutely. I just... Dr. Halston suddenly stopped, her face scrunching up. Are you okay? Lily asked again. I think my water just broke. Dr. Halston gasped. She looked down at the puddle forming at her feet. Oh my gosh! Lily leaped up from her chair. Your baby's coming! Adrenaline coursed through Lily's veins. She rushed over to Dr. Halston and helped lower her into a chair. The other staff quickly gathered around. Here, let me grab some towels, Sarah offered, hurrying to the supply closet. Lily knelt by Dr. Halston, holding her hand reassuringly. Just keep breathing. We've got you. Dr. Halston nodded, her face flushed. She took deep breaths as the contractions started. Lily looked at her watch, timing the contractions. She made Dr. Halston as comfortable as possible, elevating her feet and loosening her clothing. When Sarah returned, Lily gently placed the towels under and around Dr. Halston. She dimmed the lights to keep the doctor calm. I'm calling your husband, Lily said. He'll want to be here for this special moment. Dr. Halston managed a smile between contractions. Lily grabbed the phone and quickly dialed Mr. Halston's number. Hi, this is Lily from the clinic, she said when he answered. Your wife's water just broke. The baby is on the way. She's doing great, but you should get down here right away. She smiled encouragingly at Dr. Halston as she listened to her husband's excited reaction through the phone. After hanging up, she knelt back down and held the doctor's hand. He's on his way. How are you feeling? The contractions are getting stronger, Dr. Halston said through deep breaths but I think everything is progressing. The other staff fluttered around, providing water and cool cloths for Dr. Halston's head. Lily kept track of the time between contractions, which were now about two minutes apart. Before long, the front door burst open and Mr. Halston rushed in. He made a beeline for his wife, immediately taking her other hand. I'm here, honey, he said. You're doing so great. Dr. Halston looked lovingly at her husband as Lily squeezed her hand supportively. Let's get you back to a room. Lily wasted no time clearing Dr. Halston's schedule. Everyone was very understanding, and those with urgent issues were happy to see Dion instead. She nervously paced the front reception area, fielding calls and wringing her hands for the next couple of hours. 
Sarah and Jenna kept her updated on the baby's status, but she didn't fully relax until a tiny cry filled the clinic. Lily's eyes misted over as she ran back to congratulate the new mother. Dr. Halston beamed down at the pink, squirming newborn in her arms. He's perfect, Mr. Halston whispered, leaning down to gently stroke the baby's cheek. Lily lingered nearby, unwilling to break the spell of the tender family moment. As a nurse bustled the baby away to be checked over, Dr. Halston reached for Lily's hand again. Thank you for everything today, she said weakly but sincerely. Lily shook her head. It's you who did all the hard work. I'm just so thrilled for you both. After a few more minutes of fussing over Dr. Halston, Lily slipped away to give the new family some privacy. She made her way back to the front desk, smiling at patients in the waiting room. We have a new resident in Pine Haven, she announced, unable to contain her joy. The waiting patients broke into smiles and cheers. Lily's heart swelled with happiness for her friend and pride in their little clinic. Days like this reminded her why she loved this job so much. As she attempted to settle back into her routine, her mind drifted to her own dreams of the future. Someday, she hoped to experience the miracle of childbirth for herself. But for now, she felt content to help bring new life into the world, one family at a time. Chapter 2 The operating room doors burst open, and Dr. Brad Burrell stumbled out, sweat dripping down his face behind his surgical mask. He ripped the mask off and gulped in deep breaths of air. Nurses and other doctors hurried after him, concern on their faces. Dr. Burl, are you all right? A nurse asked. Brad waved her off, still breathing hard. I'm fine. I just needed some air. Another doctor put a hand on Brad's shoulder. That was a tough one, but you did great in there. The patient's going to make it. Thanks, Brad said, finally catching his breath. He ran a hand through his sandy brown hair and laughed shakily. I guess I'm not used to the pace in the ER anymore. It's been nonstop today. The nurse smiled sympathetically. Why don't you take a quick break? We'll page you if we need you. Brad nodded and headed down the hall to the doctor's lounge. He sank onto the leather couch with a groan, loosening his tie. Days like this made him question his career choice, but he lived for the thrill of saving lives. The fast pace of the big city was in his blood, even if it was exhausting. He downed some water and crushed the plastic bottle in his hand before throwing it into the recycling bin. And he just caught his breath again when an unfamiliar nurse poked her head into the lounge. Dr. Burl, you're needed in the ER. Of course I am, he muttered under his breath with a touch of sarcasm. But he couldn't deny it. This chaotic lifestyle was what he lived for, the adrenaline rush fueling him like a drug. And there was no time to stop and bask in success or dwell on failure. The hospital never stopped, and neither could he. Brad checked his watch as he hurried out of the hospital. The expensive timepiece glinted under the fluorescent lights, an omega given to him by his father when he graduated med school. It served as a reminder to uphold the family reputation for excellence. His cell phone vibrated in his pocket. He pulled it out and glanced at the name on the screen. Amberly, his girlfriend, if you could call her that. More like an accessory who liked to show him off at fancy events when she deemed him her boyfriend. They'd broken up and gotten back together so many times he'd lost count. But his family liked her, and she definitely kept things interesting on the social front. Speaking of, he was running late for their dinner reservation, as usual. With a resigned sigh, he answered, Hey there, I'm just finishing up at the hospital. Meet you at seven? Her bubbly voice gave him the rundown of her day, though he just let it wash over him, giving an occasional uh-huh in response. His mind was already leaping ahead to the evening. A change of clothes, then off to meet Amberly at Chez L'Etoile, the new five-star restaurant in town. His lips quirked in a wry smile. Just another day in the life. He jumped into his sleek black Audi R8 and peeled out of the parking lot, weaving through traffic. The powerful engine purred as he pushed the car faster. He loved the feel of the leather steering wheel in his hands, the adrenaline rush of driving this work of art. Within minutes, he pulled up to the exclusive French restaurant. The valet opened Brad's door, eyes widening at the luxury vehicle. Nice ride, sir, 
he said. Brad tossed him the keys with a grin. Don't scratch it. He straightened his tie and ran a hand through his artfully tousled hair as he walked into Chez L'Etoile. The maitre d' greeted him with a deferential nod and swiftly led him to a secluded table near the back, as requested. Amberly was already seated, sipping a glass of champagne. She wore a tight black dress that showed off her model figure, and her long blonde hair cascaded over her shoulders in perfect waves. Sorry I'm late, Brad said smoothly as he took his seat across from her. You know how it is at the hospital. Patients always come first, she said coolly. Surgery ran long. Brad signaled the server for a water. You look nice. Amberly shrugged. Of course I do. The server appeared for their order. Amberly immediately asked for the pan-seared scallops, the most expensive item on the menu. Brad ordered the filet mignon. He was used to her extravagant taste by now. She liked to live large on his dime. As they ate, Amberly chattered about her recent photo shoots and the new designer bag she wanted. Brad made occasional comments, but his mind was already drifting back to work. Just as he was wondering if he should check in with the hospital, his phone buzzed. Dr. Burl speaking. The voice on the other end was Dr. Collins, the chief of surgery. Brad, I have an urgent request. Dr. Megan Halston at the medical clinic in Pine Haven went into early labor and needs to go on maternity leave immediately. We need you to fill in at her practice for the next few months. Brad nearly choked on his wine. Pine Haven was a tiny mountain town hours away from the city. You want me to leave everything and move to the middle of nowhere? He asked incredulously. I know it's not ideal, but we're desperate, and it would look very good for your advancement here if you helped us out. Brad sighed, weighing his options. He'd been bucking for a promotion to head of surgery for years now. This could be his chance to finally land it. When do you need me there? He asked. As soon as possible. Megan's out as of this afternoon. Can you head up first thing in the morning? I don't know. Brad hesitated. He thrived on the fast pace of the city. But this could be a good opportunity career-wise. He looked at Amberly, who was obliviously scrolling through her phone. A little time apart might be just what they needed. I'll do it, Brad said. Excellent. I'll email you the details, Dr. Collins said. Thank you, Brad. I knew I could count on you. Brad ended the call and met Amberly's questioning gaze. Well, it looks like I'm going out of town for a while. Out of town? She set down her phone. What are you talking about? The chief just offered me a temporary position to cover for a doctor going on maternity leave, Brad explained. It would be in some small town out east. A small town? Amberly wrinkled her nose. Darling, you're not actually considering it, are you? It's only for a few months, he reasoned. Might be nice to get away for a bit. Have a change of pace. Amberly gave an exaggerated pout. But I'd miss you so much. Big cities are no fun without you. Brad suppressed an eye roll. He knew Amberly enjoyed the perks of dating a surgeon more than his actual company. Don't worry, I'm sure you'll find ways to entertain yourself, he said dryly. Amberly frowned, her perfectly glossed lips turning down as reality began to sink in. So you're serious? You're leaving me to go work in some hick town for months? It's a great opportunity for me, Brad said. This could lead to that promotion I've been wanting. But we had plans, Amberly protested. My album launch party next month, fashion week. You'll still have plenty of fun without me, Brad said dismissively. Inside, though, he felt relieved. Her parties and events were always more about being seen than actually enjoying themselves. Amberly huffed. So when are you abandoning me? I'm driving up first thing in the morning. It's just a few months and you can always come visit if you want. Just a few months stuck in Nowheresville while you play small-town doctor, Amberly said bitterly. Brad didn't argue. He knew Amberly saw Pine Haven as beneath her somehow. He wasn't exactly thrilled about it himself, but it was a means to an end. They finished their dinner in tense silence. As they left the restaurant, Brad mentally cataloged everything he would need to pack for his new temporary life. Slipping away to Pine Haven would be an interesting escape from the non-stop hustle of the city and his stifling on-again, off-again relationship with Amberly. He might even enjoy the slower pace for a while, though he'd never admit it to her. Later that night, 
Brad strode into his sleek, modern apartment and headed straight for the closet. He pulled out a large suitcase and began neatly folding his designer shirts and pants. Despite Amberly's joking tone, a part of him was looking forward to the change of pace Pinehaven offered. Truthfully, the hospital had been grinding him down lately, an endless parade of surgeries and emergencies. He was burning out, and that would be no good this early in his career. His father certainly wouldn't approve. Some time in a slower-paced town might help him regain perspective, let him remember why he became a doctor in the first place, to help people, not to collect accolades or out-earn his colleagues, though that part was nice too. And frankly, a break from Amberly would be welcomed. She was fun in small doses, but her incessant demands for gifts and nights out wore on him. He needed someone with substance, someone who actually cared about his hopes and dreams, not just his black Amex. Zipping his now full suitcase, Brad surveyed his sleek apartment. He would miss the conveniences of city living, but he had a feeling this small town adventure was exactly what he needed. Chapter three. Lily's phone rang for what seemed like the hundredth time that morning. Pinehaven Medical Clinic, this is Lily speaking. Well, hello there, sugar, came the unmistakable raspy voice of Miss Lena. I just had to call and get the scoop on little baby Halston. Have you seen that precious angel yet? Lily chuckled. Miss Lena was the first to know anything happening in Pinehaven. Ah, uh, not since he made his big arrival, Miss Lena. Dr. Halston's still on leave for several more weeks. Well, I simply cannot wait that long. You tell her to bring that bundle of joy by the Historical Society. I've got a hand-knitted blanket with his name on it. I'll be sure to let her know, Lily smiled. Just then, the distant roar of an engine made both women pause. Lily glanced out the window behind her desk and saw a shiny black sports car barreling down the gravel drive, leaving a trail of dust in its wake. Her eyes widened as the car screeched to a stop in the small parking lot. Uh-oh, sounds like we've got company. I'll talk to you later, Miss Lena. Lily quickly hung up the phone as the driver's door swung open. Out stepped a tall, handsome young man with sandy blonde hair, designer sunglasses, and a perfectly pressed dress shirt and slacks. He strode confidently through the front door as if he were swaggering down a red carpet rather than across a linoleum floor. Lily straightened in her seat. What on earth was this all about? Welcome to the Pinehaven Medical Clinic. How can I help you? She asked politely. The man flashed a million-dollar smile. Dr. Brad Burl. I'm the new physician here. Lily raised an eyebrow, instantly put off by his cocky demeanor. Funny, I didn't hear anything about Dr. Halston hiring someone new. He chuckled. Well, that's because she didn't. I'm taking over while she's on maternity leave. Lily crossed her arms. Is that so? Who did this guy think he was, waltzing in here acting like he owned the place? That's right, sweetheart. Now why don't you show me to my new office? Brad gave her a patronizing wink. Oh, he did not just call her sweetheart. Lily fumed, biting her tongue. This arrogant city slicker had a lot to learn about how things worked around here. She stood up and led the way, already dreading the next few weeks with Dr. Burrell around. Lily led him through the small waiting area, past the few curious townspeople who had stopped to gawk at the out-of-towner. She felt their eyes on her as she walked briskly down the hall, with Dr. Burl's expensive Italian dress shoes click-clacking obnoxiously on the linoleum behind her. Here we are, Lily said flatly, stopping in front of an office door marked Dr. Halston. He stepped inside and looked around, wrinkling his nose. Hmm. A bit quaint for my taste. I was expecting something a bit more... modern. Lily clenched her fists, biting back a retort. Everything about this man got under her skin. His arrogance, his flashy clothes, his know-it-all attitude. She watched as he plopped down in Dr. Halston's chair and propped his feet up on the desk. Who did this guy think he was? He knew nothing about Pinehaven or its people. All he cared about was his image and stroking his own ego. Lily vowed then and there that she would not let Dr. Burrell get away with disrespecting their quiet town. Oh, she would make him regret the day he waltzed through those doors with his designer sunglasses and cocky grin. This was her home, and she aimed to defend it against this blow-hard newcomer. 
Well, if there's nothing else you need, Dr. Burl, I'll be getting back to the front desk now, Lily said primly, resisting the urge to wipe that smug look off his face. He waved a hand dismissively, not even looking at her. Yes, fine, run along. She spun on her heel and marched out, fuming. Oh, yes, it was on. Pinehaven versus the arrogant big city doctor. She couldn't wait for the first showdown. Lily stomped back to the front desk, her cheeks flushing with irritation. That insufferable man. The nerve he had barging into their peaceful little clinic and barking orders like the people here were disposable. She sat down heavily in her chair and shuffled some papers around with more force than necessary. Everything okay, dear? Lily looked up to see Betty, one of their regular patients, peering at her over her glasses with concern. Oh, I'm fine, Betty, Lily sighed. Just our new doctor rubbing me the wrong way. Betty chuckled knowingly. City folk do take some getting used to, but I'm sure you'll whip him into shape in no time. Lily gave her a wry smile. I'll certainly do my best. Pine Haven hospitality and all that. Just then, she heard the exam room door bang open down the hall, followed by Dr. Burl's voice bellowing, Secretary. Lily clenched her jaw. Of course he expected to be waited on hand and foot. Duty calls, she told Betty. I'd better go see what his highness demands before he pitches a fit. Betty laughed again and patted Lily's hand. You show him, honey. We country gals don't take no guff. Lily stood up, squaring her shoulders. She was a professional, she reminded herself. She would handle this new challenge with grace and aplomb. Smoothing her skirt, she strode briskly down the hall towards the exam room, ready to confront the infuriating Dr. Burrell once more. Lily paused outside the exam room door, taking a deep breath before pushing it open. You bellowed? She said dryly as she entered. Dr. Burrell didn't even look up from the chart he was reviewing. Ah, there you are. I need you to schedule a follow-up appointment for Mrs. Carlson. Lily bristled at his imperious tone. Of course, Dr. Burrell, she replied in a sugary, sweet voice. But just so you know, her name is actually Callahan. Dr. Burrell finally looked up at her, his eyes narrowing. Excuse me? Mrs. Callahan, not Carlson, Lily clarified with a smug smirk. It's important to get your patients' names right, don't you think? His jaw clenched. Thank you for pointing that out. Now, about that appointment? Pompous jerk. Of course, I'll schedule that for her right after my other duties are complete. She ground out. See that you do, he replied airily, already returning his attention to the chart. Lily stood there fuming for a moment before whirling on her heel and marching out. Oh, how she would love to tell that arrogant, overbearing man exactly what she thought of him. But she wouldn't give him the satisfaction of seeing he'd gotten under her skin. No, she'd be the utmost professional if it killed her. But she sure hoped he didn't plan on staying in Pinehaven too long. She didn't know how much more of Dr. Brad Burrell she could take before she exploded. Lily busied herself with filing paperwork, trying to ignore the simmering irritation she felt towards Dr. Burrell, the nerve of that man, waltzing in here and acting like he owned the place after only being in town for five minutes. She huffed in annoyance as she slammed a file drawer shut, the sound echoing through the quiet clinic. Rough day already, dear? Lily looked up to see Miss Lena standing at the reception desk. The older woman's gaze was fixed on Dr. Burl's form down the hall, her eyes narrowed in assessment. Oh, you could say that, Lily replied wryly. How did you get over here so fast? We were just on the phone a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. You know I couldn't resist driving over and seeing what all that fuss was about during our call earlier. It's a new doctor, huh? Taking over while Halston is out. Yep, and I can't say I'm too impressed so far, Lily said, shaking her head. Seems a little too big for his britches if you ask me. Miss Lena laughed. Well, he's certainly got an ego on him, I'll give you that but maybe he'll surprise us. Lily scoffed. I doubt it. He's already managed to get on my nerves, and I've only interacted with him for a few minutes. Miss Lena chuckled. Well, don't let him get to you too much. You're a tough cookie, Lily. You'll handle him just fine. 
Lily grinned at the older woman's words of encouragement. Thanks, Miss Lena. I'll try to keep that in mind. Chapter 4 The bell over the door jingled as Lily burst into Java Joy, the warmth and rich aroma welcoming her in an instant comfort. She made a beeline for the counter after spotting her close friend, who also happened to be the manager, Maggie. Espresso double, now! She slapped her palms on the counter with an emphatic thud. Maggie's eyebrows shot up, but she grabbed a cup without hesitation. Rough day at the clinic? The espresso machine hissed as Lily collapsed onto a stool with a dramatic sigh. That new doctor is infuriating. Just because he went to some fancy medical school doesn't mean he can waltz in here and start changing everything. Maggie slid the tiny cup across the counter. Maybe he's just trying to help. Lily scowled into the inky liquid. The patients love Dr. Halston. This Dr. Burl comes in with his perfect hair and thousand-dollar shoes, and suddenly he's running the place? She took a scalding sip. I don't think so. The bell jingled again, and Lily's sister, Sophia, breezed in, her curly hair sweeping behind her like a curtain. Hey, sis. Hey, Maggie. She joined them at the counter. Lily got to meet the new doctor today. Maggie tried to hide her grin as she reached for a cup for Sophia. Lily huffed. If you can call it that. He was completely dismissive, treating me like I don't know anything. She rubbed her temples. I swear, Soph, I've never met anyone so infuriating in my life. Sophia and Maggie exchanged a knowing glance. What? Lily looked between them suspiciously. Nothing. Nothing. Sophia tried and failed to hide a smile. It's just, he's attractive, isn't he? That's beside the point, Lily said hurriedly. Oh, come on, Maggie grinned. I heard he looks like he stepped out of a fashion magazine. You have to admit that sounds pretty dreamy. Lily felt her cheeks flush and busied herself, adding more sugar to her espresso. It doesn't matter what he looks like on the outside. Inside, he's arrogant and impossible. Maggie smirked knowingly. Methinks the lady doth protest too much. I heard about the way you looked at him yesterday. Heard from who? Lily asked, though she already knew the answer. In unison, Maggie and Sophia said, Miss Lena. The two burst into laughter. There is nothing between us except pure loathing, Lily declared. He's an arrogant city boy who thinks he's better than all of us small town folk. All I feel is annoyance. Sounds like opposites attract to me, Maggie sing-songed as she wiped down the counter. Lily shook her head vehemently, ponytail swishing. Absolutely not. There is zero chance of anything ever happening between us. None. The bell above the door jingled as a customer walked in. Lily welcomed the interruption, shooting her friends a look that clearly said, We are done with this conversation. As Maggie went to help the new customer, Lily's mind drifted traitorously back to her irritating meeting with the handsome doctor. Maybe she had reacted a bit strongly, but she'd never let Sophia and Maggie know they were right. She was determined to keep Dr. Burrell at arm's length, no matter how nice his arms looked. So, Maggie leaned on the counter, fixing Lily with an eager look as soon as the customer had their drink and went to sit down. Tell us more about this new doctor. There's nothing to tell. I barely know anything about him. Oh, come on, Sophia nudged her with an elbow. We're dying for details here in Little Pine Haven. You have to give us something. Lily shrugged, avoiding their gazes. I don't know. He's from the city, I guess. Seattle, maybe? Ooh, a city boy. Maggie fanned herself dramatically. How exotic. Sophia laughed. Hey. I was a city girl once, too, you know. Yeah, but you're one of us now. Maggie dismissed with a wave of her hand. She turned her attention back to Lily. So what does this Seattle boy look like? Give us the goods. He's... Lily pictured Dr. Burl in her mind's eye, taking in his artfully tousled sandy hair, bright blue eyes, sharp jawline half hidden behind a neatly trimmed beard. 
I suppose he's rather handsome. Maggie and Sophia exchanged a knowing look. Rather handsome, she says, Maggie grinned. I have a feeling things are going to get very interesting with Dr. Dreamboat around. Lily crossed her arms over her chest, shaking her head adamantly. No way. That arrogant city slicker can keep his fancy medical degree to himself. I want nothing to do with him. Sophia gave her sister a knowing look. Come on, Lily. Don't judge him so quickly. At least try talking to him first before writing him off completely. Talk to him? Lily scoffed. About what? His polished shoes and fancy watch? No thanks. Well, Sophia thought for a moment. You could ask him about his favorite books or movies. Try to find some common ground. What does he like to do for fun? Lily threw up her hands. Beats me! I've only seen him at the clinic being all doctorly. I know nothing about his personal life. Hmm. Maggie tapped her chin in thought. Well, he's probably into things like golf, expensive wine, classical music. Sophia and Lily both laughed. Maybe, Lily said. Or maybe he secretly loves comic books and action movies. Ooh, imagine that, Maggie giggled. Big tough doctor by day, sci-fi nerd by night. Lily smiled, leaning forward with interest. You know, he did seem focused on his work, very serious. What if he's actually a giant goofball deep down? All sleek and serious on the outside, gooey and goofy on the inside. I do love a fine-looking enigma, Maggie mused. But don't worry, I won't move in on your territory. He's not my territory, Lily protested, blushing. Not yet, anyway, Maggie said with a wink. The three friends dissolved into giggles. Lily's laughter died down as she glanced out the window of the coffee shop. A sleek black Audi had just pulled up outside. Speak of the devil, Maggie murmured. Sure enough, Dr. Burl stepped out of the driver's side door. He was dressed casually in jeans and a button-down shirt. The sleeves rolled up to reveal toned forearms. Lily's mouth went dry. He cleans up nice outside of that white coat, Sophia noted appreciatively. Lily shot her a look. Down girl, you've got a fiancé at home. Doesn't mean I can't admire the view, Sophia retorted. The three watched as Dr. Burl glanced around uncertainly before entering the coffee shop. Lily felt her pulse pick up. What was he doing here? The bell above the door jangled as Brad stepped inside. His gaze landed on Lily, and his face broke into a smile. Fancy seeing you here, he said, sauntering over. Lily's mind raced. Was he seeking her out on purpose? She wasn't sure if she was thrilled or unnerved. Ladies, this is Dr. Burl, she said, introductions seeming to be in order. Dr. Burl, my sister Sophia, and our friend Maggie. Please call me Brad. His easy confidence filled the space between them with possibility. Lily shifted in her seat, suddenly feeling shy. What was happening here? Brad's eyes lingered on Lily, a small smirk playing on his lips. I hope I'm not interrupting anything important. Lily shook her head, her voice barely above a whisper. No, not at all. Maggie and Sophia exchanged knowing looks, silently taking their leave. Lily watched them go, feeling a sudden sense of panic. She was alone with Dr. Burl, Brad, and she didn't know what to do next. Brad seemed to sense her unease. Can I buy you a coffee? He offered, gesturing towards the counter. Lily hesitated. I already have one, thank you. Brad chuckled. Then can I sit with you? Sure, Lily said, a small smile forming on her lips. She couldn't help herself. Brad took the seat next to her, their thighs almost touching. Lily felt her heart race as she tried to steady her breathing. She wasn't used to feeling this kind of tension with someone, and she wasn't sure what to do with it. Look, I'm sorry about the way I was at the clinic, Brad began. I wasn't very nice when I saw you there. Can we start over? She couldn't find her words. What had caused the sudden shift in behavior? Uh, sure. Thank you. It's Lily, right? She nodded, still wordless. 
The truth is, I have no idea what I'm doing here. I feel a little bit like I've stepped onto another planet, but you seem to know everyone. So I was hoping you might be able to help me. Help you with what? She glanced over to the booth where Sophia and Maggie had relocated, conveniently situated where they could overhear every word she and Brad exchanged. Well, I tried to book a hotel room, but it was full. And there seems to be only the one hotel in town? Right. I think the McPhersons are having their family reunion this week. They've got about 800 cousins, so I'm sure it's completely booked through the weekend. See? He said with an easy laugh. You know everyone. Her cheeks warmed, and she could have sworn she heard Sophia and Maggie whispering excitedly behind her. But the problem is, I don't have anywhere to stay. Lily nearly choked on her espresso. You're not trying to get an invitation to stay at my house, are you? Now it was Brad's turn to go red. No. He cleared his throat and said it again, more quietly this time. I'm sorry. No, thank you. I just wondered if you happen to know of anywhere else with a vacant room. A finger tapped Lily on the shoulder, followed by the sound of Sophia clearing her throat. May I? Nerves bunched up in Lily's stomach. May you what? Sophia stepped forward, smiling widely at Brad. Sorry to interrupt, but I couldn't help but overhear your predicament, and I have a solution for you. Really? Brad lifted his brows. You see that building across the street? The antique store. Yep, my fiancé owns it. Not the business, but the building itself. And we've almost finished remodeling the apartment on the second floor. It's not perfect, but it's totally livable in its current state. You are welcome to stay there as long as you don't mind a few loose ends. We can have it finished by the end of the week, for sure. Brad looked at Lily as though he was asking for her permission, which she found strange since he didn't seem to care two licks about anything she had to say at the clinic. She lifted a shoulder. I don't see why not, she said nonchalantly. It's a nice gesture. Brad smiled gratefully. Thank you so much. That's really kind of you. Sophia waved it off. No problem at all. We're happy to help out a friend of Lily's. Lily shot her sister a look, feeling a little embarrassed by the implication. She hardly knew Brad, and she wasn't sure she could even call him a friend. But as she watched him exchange numbers with Sophia and say his goodbyes, she couldn't deny that she was intrigued. Maybe there was more to Brad than meets the eye. Chapter 5 Brad stared out the window of Pine Haven's small medical clinic, taking in the picturesque town adorned with golden leaves. The quaint charm of the place was starting to wear thin on him as he longed for the hustle and bustle of the city. He sighed and turned back to the computer on his desk, only to be greeted by the spinning wheel of death. Ugh, this internet connection is slower than molasses, Brad muttered under his breath, rubbing his temples. Lily, who was tidying up the reception area, overheard him and responded cheerfully, Well, you know what they say, Dr. Burl. Good things come to those who wait. Wait? Wait for what? Dial up internet to make a comeback? Brad snapped, taking his frustration out on her. I don't understand how anyone can live like this. Maybe it's not all about technology and getting things done quickly, Lily replied, her sunny disposition pushing through, even though he could tell she was irritated. Sometimes it's nice to slow down and enjoy life. Enjoy life? Great. I'll remember that the next time a patient is waiting on critical test results. Lily bit her lip, hesitating before she decided to try again. I know it's an adjustment, but there are so many wonderful things about living in a small town like Pine Haven. We might not have the latest gadgets or the fastest internet, but we have something special here. Special? The only thing special about this place is how incredibly boring it is, Brad said, finally looking up from the computer to glare at her. Dr. Burl! Brad, please. Fine, Brad. You've only been here for a short time, and I understand that it's different from what you're used to. But maybe if you gave Pinehaven a chance, you might find that there's more to life than instant gratification and constantly being connected. Though her words were kind, her tone was sharp. Is this some kind of joke? Let me guess. You're going to tell me about the joys of apple picking or making homemade candles now? Brad crossed his arms, 
his frustration simmering just below the surface. Actually, save it, Brad interrupted sharply. I don't need a lecture on the virtues of small town living. Thank you very much. Lily sighed and shook her head, her blonde hair swaying with the motion. Fine, have it your way. But don't say I didn't try to help. Trust me, I won't. As she turned to leave the room, Brad paused for a moment, contemplating his situation. Perhaps he was being a bit rude. After all, she did help him secure a place to stay by introducing him to her sister. He let out a slow breath and reluctantly called after her. Wait, Lily, I'm sorry. I know it's not your fault that I'm in this predicament. Maybe you're right. Maybe I need to give Pine Haven a chance. Would you be willing to show me around town over the weekend? It might make it easier for me to settle in, he said, swallowing his pride. Lily turned and eyed him suspiciously, but only for a moment. It wasn't long before a soft smile reappeared, even if it was purely out of an obligation for her need to show him some small town hospitality. Of course, I'd be happy to help. Meet me at the town square tomorrow morning at 10. Brad was surprised by her willingness to help him, given his earlier attitude towards Pine Haven, but he was grateful nonetheless. As he watched her gather her things and head out the door, he couldn't help but notice how her figure was accentuated by the fitted green dress she wore. He shook his head, trying to push the thought from his mind. He was here to work, not to get involved with anyone. The next morning, Brad arrived at the town square just before 10, dressed casually in a pair of jeans and a navy blue sweater. The sun was shining and the air was crisp, the perfect weather for a tour of the town. Lily was already there, wearing a cozy cream-colored sweater and a pair of faded jeans as she leaned against a lamppost and drank from a steaming cup of coffee. Good morning, she said, smiling warmly at him. Morning, Brad replied, trying to hide his surprise at how good she looked even in casual attire. Where to first? Lily took a sip of her coffee, her eyes twinkling. Well, if you're going to give Pine Haven a chance, we might as well start at the heart of the town, the farmer's market. Brad shrugged. Sure, why not? Maybe I'll even buy some homemade candles while we're there. Lily rolled her eyes, but kept her smile in place. You never know. You might actually like them. Brad followed Lily as she led him through the small streets of Pine Haven. The farmer's market was bustling with locals who were selling their fresh produce and homemade jams. Brad couldn't help but notice the sense of community that permeated the market. Everywhere he looked, people were chatting and laughing with one another. Isn't this great? Lily said. Everyone knows each other here. It's like one big family. Brad nodded, though he still couldn't shake the feeling that he didn't belong here. It's nice, I guess. Lily frowned, sensing his lack of enthusiasm. Come on, let's keep moving. There's more to see. As they walked around, Lily pointed out some of her favorite vendors and introduced Brad to some of the locals. He was surprised by how friendly everyone was, and he found himself starting to relax and enjoy the day. Morning, Miss Lena. Lily greeted an elderly woman sitting outside the library. Her frail body was wrapped in a shawl, and her eyes sparkled with intelligence. Hello, dear. Who's this handsome young man? Miss Lena asked, turning her keen gaze toward Brad. Miss Lena, this is Dr. Brad Burl. He's new to Pine Haven, Lily introduced him. Ah, the city doctor, Miss Lena nodded with a knowing smile. Well, Dr. Burrell, welcome to our little slice of heaven. I hope you find it to your liking. Uh, thank you, Miss Lena. Brad replied, feeling slightly awkward under the older woman's scrutiny. Be sure to visit me in the library sometime, dear, Miss Lena continued, addressing Brad. I have plenty of stories about this town and its residents. For example, did you know that little Jenny, the owner of the bakery, once tried to win a pie-eating contest by... Miss Lena? Lily interrupted gently. I think we'd better save those stories for another time. Very well, dear. But you two enjoy your day now, and don't be strangers. They had just rounded a corner when another voice called out, Lily, darling, who's this handsome fellow with you? Lily cringed slightly. Good morning, Mrs. Caldwell. This is Dr. Burl, the new doctor in town. Dr. Burl, the woman eyed Brad appraisingly. My, they're certainly hiring a better class of people at that clinic these days. A city doctor in Pine Haven. I assume you must be making quite a comfortable living to leave the city behind. Uh, well, 
Brad hesitated, uncomfortable with the direction of the conversation. I'm just here to fill in while Dr. Halston is on maternity leave, and Lily kindly offered to show me around town today. Of course, of course, Nancy purred, clearly not satisfied, but deciding to let the matter drop. Well, you two have fun on your little tour. And remember, Dr. Burrell, there's always more than meets the eye in Pine Haven. You'll have to come over for dinner sometime, once you're settled. She smiled coyly. Uh, sure. That would be nice, Brad said, though his tone indicated otherwise. Well, we should be going, Lily jumped in. Lots more to see today. Of course, dear. Nancy gave them one last probing look. You two have fun now. Lily quickly steered Brad away. Sorry about that, she whispered. Nancy Caldwell is the former mayor's wife. Ever since the scandal with her husband, she's been desperate to get back in people's good graces. But the only way she knows how is by sticking her nose in other people's business. He had a feeling there was a lot more to that story, but they'd have to save it for another time. Lily was already tugging him in an entirely new direction, away from the crowds of the farmer's market. Before no time, they'd reached a park near the town square, where golden leaves drifted through the crisp autumn air and children played on the swings. They found a quiet bench near a small lake and sat down, taking in the idyllic scene before them. Brad breathed in the fresh air, enjoying the peacefulness of the small town. He couldn't deny that Pine Haven had a charm that was slowly starting to grow on him. He turned his head to look at Lily, who was staring at the children playing with a wistful expression. Did you ever want kids? Brad asked, curious about the sudden shift in her demeanor. Lily looked startled for a moment before answering. Yeah, I did, but life had other plans, I suppose. Like what? He didn't know why he felt compelled to get to know this girl, but something about her had him intrigued. Well, she began, looking down at her hands. I still live with my parents. And not because I want to, but because I had to spend the first several years of my adult life helping them keep our family's coffee shop afloat. They didn't have much to pay me, and I couldn't afford to move out. But now that my sister is back and the coffee shop is going strong again, I'm hoping to finally get out on my own. Her cheeks flushed with embarrassment, but Brad was quick to reassure her. There's no shame in that. It's admirable that you would help your family like that. I actually wish I had a relationship like that with my family. What's your family like? Honestly, life at my house growing up was always a show constantly trying to perform better than everyone around me to impress my father. He paused, surprised by his own candid admission. He didn't know why he was telling her this, but it just seemed to flow right out of his mouth because Lily was so sincere and easy to talk to. He hadn't had a real conversation like this with a woman in years. Lily listened intently, her eyes locked onto his. That must have been difficult, she said softly always trying to measure up to someone else's expectations. Brad nodded. It was. And I think it's part of the reason why I became a doctor, to prove to my father that I was worth something. But you are worth something, Lily said firmly. You're a great doctor, and from what I can see, a good person too. Brad felt a warmth spread through him at her words. He couldn't remember the last time someone had said something so kind to him. Thank you, he said his voice quiet. They sat in companionable silence for a few minutes, watching the children continue to play. It was a peaceful moment, and for the first time in a long time, he felt content. Tell me something, Brad said suddenly, looking directly into Lily's eyes. What would you have done if you hadn't stayed to help your family? Well, she began hesitantly, as if she hadn't really shared this with anyone before. I've always wanted to be a nurse, actually. Really? Brad asked, genuinely interested. What's stopping you from doing that now? Lily hesitated for a moment, contemplating her answer. I'd be lying if I said I didn't think about it sometimes, she admitted. But then, I remember all the good things that have come from staying here in Pine Haven, my friends, my family, and the opportunities to help people every day at the clinic. Well, it's never too late to make a change now. I could say the same to you. Brad's cheeks warmed. This girl had somehow managed to see right through his facade, and he didn't know if he loved that about her or if it terrified him to be so exposed. 
Hey, do you want to get some ice cream from that little shop over there? Lily suggested, pointing to a quaint-looking storefront not too far from where they were sitting. Sure, Brad agreed, pushing aside his internal conflict for the time being. They stood up and walked together toward the ice cream shop, enjoying the crisp mid-autumn air that Pinehaven offered. As they stood in line, trying to decide between the delectable flavors on display, Brad couldn't help but steal glances at Lily. He began to notice little details about her, the way her eyes lit up when she laughed, the freckles that adorned her cheeks, and the way she bit her lip when she was deep in thought. These small quirks only served to make her even more endearing. Two scoops of chocolate chip cookie dough, please, Lily ordered once it was her turn, while Brad decided on a scoop of Rocky Road. They took their ice cream and found a nearby bench to sit on. Brad watched as Lily closed her eyes, letting out a contented sigh as the first scoop of chocolate chip cookie dough touched her tongue. She looked so blissful, and for a moment, Brad was struck with the thought that he wanted to be the one to make her feel this way. Hey, he said softly, breaking the comfortable silence between them. I know I'm only here for a short time, but I was wondering if you'd like to go out with me sometime, maybe dinner or a movie. Lily's eyes widened in surprise, and he could see the hesitation in her expression. I'm sorry, Brad said, a pang of disappointment twisting in his belly. That was too forward of me. No, Lily said quickly. It's not that. It's just... I don't think it would be a good idea for us to date, knowing that you're only here in Pinehaven for a short time. And we work together. Brad opened his mouth to argue, but then realized she was right. He couldn't expect her to take the risk of getting attached and then having him leave shortly after. And she certainly didn't seem like the type to want a short fling. Yeah, he said softly, nodding his head in understanding. You're probably right but that didn't help the sting of rejection. How long had it been since a woman had told him no? He couldn't shake them off with a stick back in the city. He watched as Lily let out a slow breath before giving him a small smile. She reached out and gave his arm a reassuring squeeze before standing up to go home. I'll see you at work on Monday, she said with a laugh, trying to lighten the mood between them after such an awkward moment. Right, see you then. Chapter 6 Java Joy buzzed with energy as Lily and Sophia found a cozy corner to sit in, the art show attendees milling around them. The coffee shop's walls were adorned with vibrant paintings from local artists, each piece telling its own unique story. A live band played an upbeat tune in the background, the melodies intertwining with the smell of freshly brewed coffee. Okay, so we walked through town and then we went to the park. Lily recounted her day with Brad to Sophia, who was listening intently. We had this really deep conversation about our dreams and families, Soph. It was... nice. Sophia raised an eyebrow, her voice playful and teasing. Sounds to me like Dr. Hottie might be interested in you, sis. Lily shook her head, her long blonde hair swaying gently. It's all so confusing. Remember how he was short with me again at the clinic last week? He acted like he still thought he was too good for Pinehaven. But then today, he was so wonderful and kind when we spent time together. Sometimes people just need time to adjust, Sophia offered, adjusting a painting on the wall. I mean, he is from the city. People can surprise you sometimes. Or maybe he's just playing games, Lily mused her skepticism creeping back into her voice. I mean, he's so charming and attractive, but I'm not sure if it's genuine or just an act. Only one way to find out, right? Suggested Sophia with a wink. Give him a chance and see what happens. Lily took a sip of her latte, contemplating her sister's advice. Part of her wanted to believe Brad was being sincere, that he was really starting to care for her, but the nagging doubts persisted. All right, Lily said, stealing herself. I'll try to keep an open mind about Brad. I mean, he did ask me out to dinner after our tour around town. Really? Sophia's eyes widened with excitement. What did you say? Actually, I told him no, Lily admitted, biting her lip nervously. I just wasn't sure how I felt about him yet. He's wildly attractive, but not exactly my type, you know. Sophia nodded knowingly. I get it. 
but maybe this is your chance to explore something new and unexpected. You never know what might happen. Maybe, Lily agreed. She couldn't shake the feeling that there was more to Brad than met the eye. Something deep and genuine hidden beneath his polished exterior. Besides, Sophia continued, think of all the times you've wished for a little excitement in your life. This could be it, Lil. A handsome doctor from the big city sweeping you off your feet. What's not to love? Lily laughed, her heart warming at her sister's enthusiasm. You make it sound like a romance novel. Who says it can't be? Sophia teased, giving her a playful nudge. But seriously, Lil, give the guy a chance. If you still don't feel a connection after a few more dates, then at least you'll know you tried. I'll agree to consider it. Lily relented, smiling softly as she watched the art show attendees mingle and admire the paintings and photographs adorning the walls. But if I get my heart broken, you're supplying me with double chocolate chip ice cream and sappy movies for a week. Deal, Sophia agreed, laughing. But I have a feeling you won't need it. Just then, they spotted Brad crossing the street, making his way toward Java Joy. Lily's heart skipped a beat as she watched him through the coffee shop windows. He looked effortlessly charming, his sandy hair slightly tousled by the breeze. Looks like the hot doctor is coming to see you again, Maggie said as she passed by, carrying a tray of fresh pastries. She winked at Lily, causing her to blush and roll her eyes playfully. Hi, Lily. Sophia. Brad greeted them warmly as he entered the coffee shop. His dark blue eyes sparkled with genuine warmth. Hey, Brad. Lily tried to keep her voice steady despite the sudden flutter in her chest. Thanks again for joining me on the tour earlier. I hope you enjoyed your day in Pine Haven. Of course, you were an excellent tour guide. Brad smiled, leaning casually against the counter. You really know how to show someone the best parts of this town. Maybe next time I could show you some of the hidden gems of Pine Haven, Lily suggested, her cheeks flushing as she realized how forward she sounded. She glanced over at Sophia, who gave her an encouraging nod. I'd like that, Brad said, his smile growing deeper. I'm always up for discovering new places with good company. Lily relaxed a little at his words, realizing that maybe Sophia was right. Maybe she should give Brad a chance and see where it would lead. He seemed genuinely interested in getting to know her, and she couldn't deny that she was attracted to him as well. Great, she said, giving him a soft smile. I'll look up some places for us to explore. Sounds perfect. Brad's eyes never left hers. Lily felt herself getting lost in his gaze, her heart racing a little faster. Hey, guys, Maggie interrupted, setting down her tray on a nearby table. What can I get for you? Lily tore her gaze away from Brad's, feeling a little embarrassed at how easily he had distracted her. I'll have another latte, please. Same here, Brad said, still smiling at her. And a croissant, if you have any left. Coming right up, Maggie said, winking. You know what? I'll help. Lily jumped up and followed her friend back to the counter without risking another look at Brad. She couldn't risk getting lost in his eyes again. Hey, Mags, she whispered as she approached the counter where her friend was reaching for a croissant. Can I talk to you for a moment? Of course, what's up, girl? Lily hesitated, biting her lip. I'm just confused about Brad. I mean, he's charming and attractive, but sometimes he seems like he's playing games with me. And I don't want to be just another conquest for him, you know? Maggie nodded understandingly, her eyes sympathetic. I get it. But I also think you should give him a chance. He seems really into you, Lily. And who knows? Maybe he's not as superficial as he seems. Maybe. Lily sighed, still uncertain. I just don't want to get hurt. Totally understandable, Maggie agreed, giving her shoulder a reassuring squeeze. Just remember, you're a strong, independent woman who doesn't need a man to be happy. But if he makes you happy, then why not go for it? But what if he's just looking for a fling? Lily asked, her voice barely above a whisper. Then you'll know, 
Maggie replied with a shrug. But you won't know unless you give him a chance. And who knows, it could turn out to be something really great. Lily took a deep breath, feeling her resolve strengthen. You're right. I shouldn't be so quick to judge him. I'll give him a chance. That's the spirit, Maggie said, beaming at her. Now let's go give Dr. Hadi his coffee and croissant. Lily laughed, feeling a little more confident as she and Maggie headed back to the table. Brad's eyes lit up as he saw them approach, and Lily couldn't help but feel a little flutter in her chest at the sight. Thanks, Maggie, Brad said, taking the steaming cup of coffee and the croissant from her. You're a lifesaver. Anytime, Brad, Maggie replied with a grin, and if you ever need a doctor's note to skip work, you know who to call. They all laughed, the tension in the air dissipating. Lily felt herself relax a little as they chatted about their plans for the upcoming weekend. She even found herself enjoying Brad's company more than she had expected. Just then, Brad's cell phone rang. He glanced at the screen and his expression changed. Sorry, I have to take this, he said, stepping away from the table. Lily watched him cross to the other side of the shop, phone to his ear. Her curiosity got the better of her, and she inched closer to accidentally over here. Hey, Amberly. Yeah, I'm still in Pine Haven. No, it's not what you think. I, uh, yeah, I've been thinking about you too. His voice trailed off as he walked further away, but Lily's heart sank with every word she heard. Amberly, she repeated to herself, her stomach twisting into knots. Her mind raced with thoughts of what Brad's relationship with Amberly might be like. Was it a girlfriend? Were they still together? Or maybe a sister? Are you okay? Sophia's voice brought her back to the present. Um, yeah, I'm fine. Lily lied, forcing a smile. Just lost in thought, I guess. Lost in Brad thoughts, huh? Sophia teased, but Lily couldn't find it in herself to laugh. Something like that, she admitted quietly, her gaze fixed on Brad as he continued his conversation with Amber Lee outside the coffee shop. The conflicting emotions within her seemed to be at war, and she felt torn between wanting to trust Brad and fearing that he would only cause her pain. Her heart fluttered nervously in her chest, and she could feel her palms starting to sweat. Look, Sophia said gently, placing a hand on her sister's arm. I know you're scared, and I understand why. But sometimes we have to take risks for love. If you never put yourself out there, you'll never know what could have been. Lily sighed, knowing her sister was right. But watching Brad talking to Amberly, she couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. And until she knew for sure, she wasn't ready to let her guard down completely. Maybe, she agreed hesitantly, but not tonight. I think I need some more time to figure things out. Take all the time you need. Sophia reassured her. Just remember that you deserve happiness, too. Lily nodded, grateful for her sister's support. She watched as Brad hung up the phone and walked back towards their table, his expression a little troubled. Everything okay? Lily asked, trying to keep her voice steady. Brad hesitated for a moment before replying. Yeah, everything's fine. Just some work stuff I have to deal with. Lily nodded not quite believing him. But she didn't want to push it, not when she wasn't sure what she was feeling herself. As they finished their drinks and said their goodbyes, Lily felt a sense of relief wash over her. She needed some time to sort out her feelings before she could even begin to think about taking a chance with Brad. Maybe Sophia was right and she did deserve happiness, but she wasn't willing to settle for anything less than the real thing. Chapter 7 Brad glanced up from a clipboard as the exam room door swung open. His eyes narrowed slightly as Nancy Caldwell sauntered in. What was she doing here? Dr. Burrell, she said, her voice dripping with honey. I seem to have come down with a sudden bout of dizziness. Can you help me? Brad nodded, trying not to let his apprehension show on his face. He remembered her from his walk through Pine Haven with Lily. There had been a scandal involving Nancy's husband and some shady business dealings. He didn't know much about it, but he knew that Lily wasn't a fan. Of course, Mrs. Caldwell, 
he said, forcing a smile. Please, have a seat. Nancy flashed a coy smile as she perched on the edge of the exam table. Right. Let's take a look then. Brad wrapped the blood pressure cuff around her arm, keeping his tone brisk and professional. As the cuff tightened, he noticed Nancy studying him intently. So tell me, how does a big city doctor like yourself end up in a little backwater like Pine Haven? Brad shifted, focusing on recording her vitals to avoid meeting her gaze, just filling in temporarily for Dr. Halston, as I mentioned before. Come now, there must be more to it than that. Nancy tilted her head. A successful, handsome young doctor like you? You must have plans for that medical degree beyond this sleepy town. It's complicated. Brad busied himself putting away the blood pressure cuff. Nancy's probing was making him increasingly uneasy. Oh, I'm sure a smart man like you has it all figured out. Brad's jaw tightened. Her flattery felt like a fishing expedition. But why? As Nancy continued with her relentless questions about his background and career, Brad's thoughts drifted to Lily. He wished she was the one sitting here instead of Nancy. Lily's quick wit and sunny warmth could brighten even a tedious clinic visit. Then, as though reading his very thoughts, Nancy mentioned Lily's name. You two seem quite cozy lately. Tell me, is it serious between you? Brad blinked, caught off guard. What? No, we're just friends. He thought he heard a derisive snort from his nurse, Jenna, as she passed by the room. Heat rose in Brad's cheeks. He wished it was more serious with Lily, but she'd declined his invitation to dinner. Where did they stand? Nancy smirked knowingly as she hopped off the table. Well, everything seems normal. I'm feeling much better now. Thank you, doctor. As the door closed behind her, Brad sank into his chair, rubbing his temples. What just happened? And how was he going to fix things with Lily? Brad took a deep breath to clear his head before his next patient arrived. As he organized the papers on his desk, his thoughts returned to Lily. He remembered the sparkle in her eyes when he'd asked her to dinner, her smile fading as she politely declined. He wished he could rewind and try again. Brad cared about Lily more than he'd expected. She wasn't like the women he usually dated, polished professionals who fit seamlessly into his world. Lily was a small-town girl with big dreams. He found her optimism infectious. She made him imagine a different kind of future, a future here in Pine Haven. The idea surprised Brad. He'd never considered staying beyond his short-term assignment, but now the thought of leaving Lily behind bothered him. Brad resolved to win her over before he left. He just had to figure out where he'd gone wrong. Jenna entered with his next patient file. As she handed it to him, she gave Brad a knowing look. Don't mess this up, she said pointedly. Brad's eyebrows shot up. Jenna clearly knew more about the situation with Lily than he did, but he was determined to make it right. Lily was special. He just had to convince her to take a chance on him. After she left, Brad headed straight for the reception desk, determined to get to the bottom of things with Lily. So, Nancy Caldwell just came to see me, he began casually. Lily kept her eyes on her computer screen. Oh, she said in a neutral tone. She was asking some odd questions about you and me. Was she? Lily said vaguely, still not looking at him. Brad felt a flare of frustration. Lily, did I do something to upset you? If so, tell me, and I'll make it right. Lily's eyes finally met his, wide with surprise. N no, you didn't, she stammered. A faint blush rose on her cheeks, and his frustration melted. No, he definitely didn't want to leave Pine Haven just yet, not until he'd unlocked the mystery of Lily Matthews' heart. Brad was about to ask Lily more, but Jenna walked by again, shooting him a stern, disapproving look. He blinked in surprise. What was that for? Lily noticed the exchange and seemed to fold in on herself, avoiding Brad's gaze again. Brad was thoroughly confused now. He didn't understand what he'd done to upset her, but he was determined to figure it out and make things right between them. Lily meant more to him than he cared to admit. The thought of leaving Pine Haven with her, thinking poorly of him, made his heart ache in a surprising way. He had to show her that whatever she thought of him, she was wrong. He wasn't the callous, big city playboy she likely imagined. Underneath his polished exterior, he had a heart, one that was starting to beat exclusively for her. Somehow, some way, he'd find the key to unlocking her distrust and winning her over. He had to.
Later that evening, Brad returned to his sparsely furnished apartment with a personal pizza from the Italian restaurant on Main Street. He ate quickly, expecting Sophia and Ethan to arrive at any minute. He'd just finished when a knock sounded at the door. Hey guys, come on in, Brad said, stepping aside. Sophia's gaze swept over the mostly empty space. Wow, you really don't have much here, do you? Brad rubbed the back of his neck. Yeah, I'm not really one for material things. And I won't be here long, so no need to accumulate a bunch of stuff. Well, you should at least have the essentials to be comfortable during your stay, Sophia replied. Ethan set down his toolbox and got to work inspecting part of the wall near the window. Mind if I get started on this leak real quick? He asked Brad. Not at all. Go right ahead, Brad said. He watched Ethan begin examining the area, impressed by his competence. Brad's own skills were far more suited to the operating room than home repairs. Want me to lend a hand? Brad offered. Ethan chuckled. No offense, but I'm not sure how much help you'd be. Why don't you just relax and let me handle this? Brad conceded Ethan was right. He took a seat on one of the two chairs in the living room while Sophia perched on the armrest. So, what's next after your stint here? She asked. Heading back to the big city? That's the plan, Brad replied, a twinge in his chest at the thought. He pushed it aside. Pine Haven was just supposed to be a temporary stop, he reminded himself. Sophia looked thoughtful. Well, no reason you can't make yourself at home while you're here. Why not check out some of the goods in that antique shop downstairs? Could find some interesting pieces. Brad made a face. Antiques aren't really my taste. I've got a workshop where I make custom furniture, Ethan chimed in, still focused on his work. Come by sometime and we can build you something you'll really like. That's real nice of you, thanks, Brad said. He found himself unexpectedly warmed by their kindness. For the first time, the thought of staying in Pine Haven a bit longer didn't seem so bad. His mind drifted to Lily again. If only he could find a way into her heart before he left. Brad cleared his throat. So, uh... Lily seems like a real nice girl. Sophia raised an eyebrow. She is. Why do you ask? Oh, no reason, Brad said casually. Just wondering what kinds of things she's into, her hobbies and interests and all that. Trying to get to know her better, are you? Sophia asked knowingly. Brad felt his face grow warm. I just want to make sure I don't upset her again. I'm not sure what I did, but she's been giving me the cold shoulder lately. Sophia laughed. Don't take it personally. Lily's got a good heart, but she can be stubborn. Just give her some time. Any suggestions on how to get on her good side? Brad asked hopefully. Well, Sophia twisted her mouth to one side as she thought about it. Lily loves reading. She's always got her nose buried in a book when she has the chance. She's also into gardening. She takes care of our parents' flower garden at home. Thanks, Brad said, making a mental note of each detail. That's really helpful. Ethan stood and joined them, giving Brad a friendly pat on the back. Just remember to be yourself, man. That's all any of us can do, right? Right. The problem was that Brad wasn't sure who he really was. Outside of the city and the notoriety that came with his work there, he was back to square one. And worse, part of him feared that Lily wouldn't like whoever he was once he figured it out. One more thing, Sophia added. She's a huge fan of old movies, especially black and white classics. So when in doubt, a movie night is always a safe bet. Brad filed the information away. Making things right with Lily suddenly seemed like the most important thing in the world. He just had to show her that he wasn't the callous playboy she thought he was. Thanks, guys, he said warmly. I appreciate the advice. Sophia gave him a knowing look. No problem. Just be good to her. You hear me? I will, Brad promised, and he meant it with all his heart. Chapter 8 The morning air was crisp and tinged with the scent of freshly baked goods as Lily made her way to Java Joy. The warm glow from the coffee shop windows spilled out onto the sidewalk, casting an inviting allure that beckoned her inside. As she pushed the door open, a bell chimed merrily overhead, announcing her arrival. Good morning, sunshine. Maggie chirped, her bright red ponytail swinging as she grabbed a to-go cup. The usual? You know it, Lily said with a smile. A hazelnut latte is the only way to start the day. 
Maggie whistled as she worked the espresso machine. Someone's in a chipper mood. I'd think you'd be dragging with as early as you get up. Lily shrugged. What can I say? Waking up before dawn has its perks. Look at you, little Miss Positivity, Maggie teased. I swear you could find a rainbow in a rainstorm. Oh, stop, Lily laughed. I just try not to sweat the small stuff. But try as she might, she'd been fighting to keep a smile ever since she'd allowed her feelings to get so messy about Brad. Lily sighed deeply, the weight of her thoughts finally breaking through her cheerful facade. Her fingers tapped along the edge of the coffee cup in a nervous rhythm. Whoa, hold up, Maggie said, her eyes wide with concern as she leaned across the counter. I've never heard you sigh like that before. What's going on, Lily? It's just, work's been challenging lately, she admitted, her gaze dropping to the swirling patterns of foam in her coffee. She hesitated, unsure if she should reveal more. Challenging how? Maggie pressed, her bright red hair bouncing with every nod of encouragement. Come on, spill the beans. You know you can talk to me. All right, all right, Lily relented, taking a deep breath. It's Brad, she confessed, her voice barely above a whisper. Dr. Hottie? Maggie asked, her eyebrows shooting up in surprise. What's he done now? Lily recounted the scene she had stumbled upon at the art show. Brad's hushed phone conversation with someone named Amber Lee. The disappointment she felt at being nothing more than a distraction for him while his real relationship was waiting back in the city lingered heavily in her chest. Let me get this straight, Maggie said, her eyes narrowed in thought. You think you're just a small town fling to him while he's got a city girl on the side? Something like that, Lily mumbled, feeling foolish as she voiced her fears aloud. Maybe I'm overthinking things, but it's hard not to. I told him I didn't want to date him, but... She swirled the last few drops of her coffee around in the cup. It's not like working with him was a walk in the park to begin with. He's charming and just so distractingly good-looking, you know? Maggie let out a snort that turned into a full-blown laugh. Oh, honey, I know. The man is a walking billboard for heartache. Lily rolled her eyes but couldn't help smiling. I'm being serious, though. It's hard enough trying to maintain a professional relationship with someone when they look like they walked straight out of a cologne ad. But now with this Amberly situation, I feel like I'm constantly on edge, waiting for the other shoe to drop. Okay, I get it. Maggie leaned in, her expression turning serious. But remember what I said earlier. Sometimes things aren't as they seem. Maybe there's more going on with Brad and Amberly than you realize. Like what? Lily asked. Who knows? Maggie shrugged. Maybe she's an ex-girlfriend who can't let go. Or maybe she's his long-lost sister. The point is, you don't know the whole story, so don't jump to conclusions. Maybe you're right, Lily conceded, chewing on her lip thoughtfully. It's just hard not to feel threatened by someone I know so little about, especially when she's so clearly a part of Brad's life. Then ask him about her, Maggie suggested. Don't make assumptions based on one snippet of conversation you happen to overhear. I guess I could do that, Lily mused, her brow furrowing as she contemplated the idea of confronting Brad about Amberly. She wasn't sure how he would react, or if she even wanted to hear the truth. But she knew Maggie was right. She owed it to herself and to Brad to at least try. Good, Maggie said firmly. Now, I've got to get back to work. Eric's been glaring daggers at me for the last ten minutes. Sorry, Lily apologized, glancing over at their friend Eric, who looked thoroughly unimpressed with their lengthy conversation. I didn't mean to keep you from your job. No worries, Maggie waved her off, heading back behind the counter. This is the most fun I've had all day. Is that supposed to make me feel better? Lily called after her laughing as Maggie shot her a cheeky grin. Think about what I said, though, Maggie reminded her before turning her attention back to the espresso machine. And remember, sometimes people surprise you. With those parting words, Lily gathered her things and headed out the door, her mind racing with possibilities. Upon entering the clinic, 
Lily was greeted by a surprising sight. Her desk, normally neat and tidy, was adorned with her favorite things, delicate flowers in a pretty vase, an assortment of chocolates and books, and a stack of old black and white movies in several different genres from Casablanca to Citizen Kane. Confused and touched, she glanced around the room, trying to figure out who could have done this. Did you redecorate in here? Dion asked as he walked past her, pausing to take in the scene. Um, no, Lily replied, her eyes still scanning the office for any signs of the culprit. I didn't do this. Ah, uh, well, it's very... You, he said, nodding awkwardly before continuing on his way. Thanks, she called after him, her curiosity piqued. Who knew her well enough to pick out such perfect gifts? As she approached her desk, she noticed a small card tucked beneath the bouquet of flowers. She picked it up and opened the envelope, revealing a simple white card with a handwritten message inside. Dear Lily, I hope these little surprises brighten your day. Sometimes life can be tough, but don't forget to smile. Best wishes, a friend. Lily's heart swelled with gratitude as she held the card to her chest. Whoever had left her these thoughtful gifts had indeed brightened her day. This gesture meant more to her than they could ever know. Okay, seriously, who did this? She questioned out loud, unable to hold back a smile as she placed the card back on her desk. Wasn't me, Jenna chimed in, poking her head into the reception area. But I wish I'd thought of it. Your desk looks lovely. Thank you, Lily replied, still puzzled by the mystery. I just wish I knew who to thank. Maybe it's a secret admirer, Jenna suggested with a wink before disappearing down the hallway. Or maybe it's just someone trying to be a good friend, Lily whispered to herself, her thoughts drifting back to her conversation with Maggie. Sometimes people surprise you, she repeated softly, realizing that there was more to life than what met the eye. Hey, Lily. The sound of Brad's voice made her heart skip a beat as she looked up to see him standing in the doorway. His dark blue eyes held an expression of genuine apology. I didn't know what kind of chocolates or books you liked, so I got you a little bit of everything, he confessed, gesturing toward the gifts on her desk. Can we talk? Lily hesitated for just a moment before nodding, her curiosity and confusion prompting her to listen to what he had to say. Sure, let's talk. First of all, I just want to say that I'm sorry if I upset you. Brad said earnestly, rubbing the back of his neck nervously. I don't know what I did, but I'm really sorry. Lily blinked in surprise at the sincerity in his voice and the effort he had put into making amends. She couldn't help but feel touched by his gesture, even though she still felt cautious about letting her guard down. Thank you, she finally replied, her voice softening. I appreciate the apology, and these gifts are lovely. But I have to ask, why? Brad hesitated, his eyes searching hers for understanding. Because I care about you, Lily. I may not always show it, but I do. And I hate knowing that I've hurt someone I care about. A heavy silence hung in the air for a moment, until the real thoughts haunting Lily's mind finally came spilling out. The truth is, I overheard you talking on the phone to someone named Amberly she admitted, her blue eyes meeting his. I was surprised since you had just asked me out on a date. So, who is she? Brad's face fell as he realized the source of her hurt. I see, he said quietly. Amberly is... Well, she was my on-again, off-again girlfriend from the city. But things have been strained between us for quite a while. I didn't realize how bad things were until I got to Pine Haven. He paused, gathering his thoughts before continuing. On the night of the art show, after I got home, I officially called things off between us. It wasn't fair to her or to me to keep up the pretense. I wanted to start fresh here in Pine Haven, and that meant letting go of my past. The silence that followed Brad's confession hung heavy in the small office, broken only by the ticking of a clock on the wall. Lily nervously tapped her fingers against her thigh, processing everything he'd just revealed. 
Thank you for telling me, she said quietly. I'm sorry for snooping. It was wrong of me to eavesdrop. Brad shook his head. No, I understand why you were upset, and I should have been honest with you from the start. And I know you're not interested in anything more, but I hope we can at least be friends, given our working relationship. Friends? She echoed, as if testing the word in her mouth. Friends, he confirmed with a nod. Lily studied him for a moment, weighing her options. His charm was hard to resist, but she knew she needed to protect her heart. With a small nod, she agreed. Yes, let's be friends, Brad. Relief washed over his handsome face, and she smiled, her optimism returning like a ray of sunshine piercing through storm clouds. Good. Now, about all these gifts. She gestured to the flowers, chocolates, and movies that decorated her desk. Thank you. You didn't have to, but I appreciate it. I was happy to do it. A little bird told me you liked classic movies, but I really need to learn more about you so that I can get the right kind of books next time. I wasn't sure if you'd rather read about space wars or Scottish hunks. She laughed. Why not Scottish hunks in space? Now that would be something. Brad leaned against the doorframe, his sandy-colored hair perfectly styled as always. Hey, since we're friends again, I had an idea for a friendly outing this weekend. I heard there's an apple orchard not too far from Pine Haven. Maybe we could go apple picking? Apple picking? Lily asked, watching as a mischievous grin spread across his face. She found it difficult to resist the allure of his dark blue eyes. Isn't that a little too small town for you? Not at all, he replied, his voice light and teasing. It's the perfect fall activity, and I promise not to throw any apples at you. Lily laughed, the sound filling the room like a bell. She couldn't help but feel drawn to his playful energy. All right, let's do it. But, she added, holding up a finger, we need to establish some clear boundaries for our friendship. It has to remain strictly platonic. Absolutely, Brad agreed without hesitation, his eyes meeting hers with genuine understanding. I respect your boundaries, Lily, and I appreciate your honesty. Thank you she said softly, feeling a warm glow of relief wash over her. Great, so it's a date then, Brad beamed, catching himself quickly. I mean, not a date, a friend outing, definitely just friends. Right, Lily chuckled, rolling her eyes playfully, just friends. As Brad walked away, a newfound sense of camaraderie between them, Lily wondered if she was playing with fire. There was something about him that made her heart skip a beat, and she knew she'd have to tread carefully. Chapter 9 Lily shivered slightly as she waited outside Java Joy, her breath visible in the crisp autumn air. The vibrant hues of red and gold leaves swirled around her feet, adding a touch of magic to the small-town atmosphere. She checked her watch impatiently, wondering if Brad had overslept or changed his mind about their apple-picking day. Just then, a sleek white BMW pulled up and parked across the street. A woman who looked like she had stepped straight off the pages of a fashion magazine emerged, her long legs gliding gracefully across the pavement. As she marched toward Brad's building, Lily couldn't help but feel a pang of insecurity. What could someone like that possibly want in Pine Haven? Brad appeared, stepping out of the door, looking dashing in his casual attire. He seemed just as surprised to see the stunning woman striding toward him. Amberly, he blurted out, clearly taken aback by her unexpected arrival. Brad, darling, Amberly purred as she closed the distance between them, her voice dripping with false sweetness. Not wanting to be left out in the cold, both literally and figuratively, Lily crossed the street, her heart pounding in her chest as she approached the pair. Hi, Brad, she greeted him, trying to sound cheerful despite the sudden tension in the air. Hey, Lily, Brad replied, his eyes flicking between her and Amberly. This is Amberly, my, uh, my ex-girlfriend. His girlfriend, Amberly said at the same time, giving Lily a brief dismissive glance. She looped her arm through Brad's possessively. Surprise, baby. I couldn't stand us being apart a minute longer. 
Brad gently extracted himself from her grip. Nice to meet you, Amberly, Lily said, forcing a smile onto her face, even though it felt more like a grimace. Likewise, I'm sure, Amberly replied, her tone icy as she gave a dismissive wave of her perfectly manicured hand. Brad rubbed the back of his neck, clearly uncomfortable with the situation. So, uh, Lily and I were just about to head out for some apple picking? Apple picking? Amberly scoffed, as though the mere idea was beneath her. Well, I suppose it takes all sorts to make a world, doesn't it? Lily clenched her fists, trying to keep her cool in the face of Amberly's condescension. She reminded herself why she was here, for a fun day with Brad not to let this woman ruin their plans with her unexpected presence. Still, the tension that now hung in the air was palpable, casting a shadow over what was supposed to be a lighthearted outing. Hey, why don't you join us, Amberly? Lily suggested, her voice betraying no hint of the turmoil inside her. The more, the merrier, right? What? Brad asked, his eyebrows raised in surprise. Lily shot him a look that she hoped came off as laid back and carefree, though she felt a wild kind of jealousy flare up inside. That was silly. She had no reason to be jealous. Brad and Amberly weren't together anymore, and neither were Brad and Lily. They were just friends, just friends. That sounds perfect. Amberly clasped her hands together. We can all ride together in Brad's car. Though Brad looked supremely uncomfortable with the idea, he didn't object as the three of them headed toward his sleek sports car. Amberly instantly took the passenger seat up front, leaving Lily to squeeze herself into the too tight back seat. She struggled to find a comfortable position, her knees pressed against the back of Brad's seat and her head almost touching the ceiling. As they drove, Lily tried to focus on the scenery outside, the vibrant colors of the changing leaves, the quaint shops lining the streets of Pine Haven, anything to take her mind off the awkward situation she found herself in. She reminded herself that she and Brad were just friends, nothing more. She owed it to him to be gracious and welcoming, even if it meant enduring Amberly's presence for the day. Ah, uh, I've always loved this car. Amberly cooed from the front seat as they cruised along the winding country roads. It certainly beats picking apples, doesn't it? Lily stared out the window as farms and fields rolled by, trying not to focus on Amberly's incessant chattering up front. She reminded herself that she and Brad were just friends. Still, having his ex-girlfriend along changed the whole dynamic of their outing. Hopefully the fresh air and exercise might distract her from the awkwardness. At least the orchard itself would be beautiful, filled with the sights and scents of autumn. She just had to make it through the car ride first. The car ride felt endless, but finally they pulled into the gravel parking lot of Pine Valley Orchard. Lily eagerly climbed out, stretching her cramped legs. Rows of apple trees spread out before them, leaves bursting with vibrant reds, oranges, and yellows. The crisp, sweet smell of apples hung in the air. Oh, how charming! Amberly said in a tone that implied the exact opposite. Lily bit her tongue. She was determined not to let Amberly's attitude ruin this for her. I'll grab us a bucket and shears, Brad said. You ladies find us a good tree. Amberly immediately looped her arm through Brad's. I'll come with you, darling. Lily can scout out a spot. Lily trudged off, irritation simmering. But the sight of families laughing together and kids playing in the grass lifted her spirits. She found a large tree at the end of a row, its branches heavy with bright red apples. Perfect. Wow, Lily breathed, momentarily forgetting about Amberly. This is beautiful. Isn't it? Brad agreed, stepping up behind her. I've never been apple picking before, but I thought it would be a fun way to unwind after a long week. Unwind? Amberly scoffed, rolling her eyes. I can think of a hundred better ways to do that. Then by all means, go do one of those things, Lily snapped before she could stop herself. She instantly regretted it, feeling her cheeks redden with embarrassment. I mean, you don't have to stay if you're not enjoying yourself, she added more gently. Trust me, darling, if I had any other option, I'd take it, Amberly retorted, her tone dripping with condescension. 
Lily clenched her fist, fighting the urge to respond to Amberly's provocations. She didn't want to jeopardize her friendship with Brad, especially not over someone like Amberly. She took a deep breath, forcing herself to focus on the beauty of the orchard and the serenity of the setting. Come on, let's get started, Brad suggested, trying to diffuse the tension. We've got a lot of apples to pick. But as they started picking, Amberly made snide remarks about everything from Lily's outfit to her apple picking technique. Lily did her best to put on a brave face, laughing at Brad's jokes and engaging in lighthearted conversation. But with each dismissive remark and snide comment from Amberly, it became increasingly difficult for Lily to maintain her composure. Really, Brad, Amberly drawled as they reached a particularly bountiful tree. I don't understand why you'd waste your time on something so pedestrian. Pedestrian? Lily repeated, unable to hold her tongue any longer. Amberly, just because something is simple doesn't mean it's not worthwhile or enjoyable. Please, Amberly sneered. Save the hallmark sentiments for someone who cares. Lily bit her tongue and wandered off on her own for a bit, coming to an especially gorgeous tree full of shiny red fruit. She was struggling with it, but she had to focus on the natural beauty around her instead of letting the drama pull her down. By the time Brad and Amberly joined her, Lily's frustration had faded. She smiled, handing Brad an apple. For the doctor, she said with a playful grin. Why, thank you, my dear. Brad gave a dramatic bow, biting into the apple with a satisfying crunch. Lily laughed. She felt lighter already, her earlier tension gone. Maybe this wouldn't be so bad after all, or so she thought. Then Amberly crossed a line. Honestly, Brad, I don't know how you tolerate this backwater town, she said, loud enough for Lily to hear. No culture, no sophistication. You must be bored out of your mind here with these simple country bumpkins. Lily froze, stung. That was it. She couldn't stay silent any longer. Whirling around, she fixed Amberly with a fiery glare. You listen here. I've had just about enough of your superior attitude and rude comments. Amberly's eyes widened in shock. Brad turned, eyebrows raised. Lily barreled on, emboldened. Just because you're from the city doesn't make you better than us. I won't stand here and let you insult my home and my friends. If you don't like it here, you're free to leave. But don't you dare look down on us small town folks when we've shown you nothing but kindness. Lily paused, chest heaving. Amberly stared, mouth agape. A smile twitched at Brad's lips. Well said, Lily. Admiration glinted in his eyes. Lily lifted her chin, refusing to back down. For the first time all day, she didn't feel like a third wheel. She felt empowered. Brad stepped forward, facing Amberly with a stern expression. Lily's right, he said. I've had enough of this, too. We're done, Amberly. It's like I told you the other day, this relationship isn't working. Amberly's face reddened. What? You can't break up with me. She gestured angrily at Lily. It's because of her, isn't it? That plain country nobody. Brad shook his head. I already did. This has nothing to do with Lily. We've had problems for a long time. I was clear when we talked last week. I'm not interested in continuing this relationship. You didn't mean that, Amberly insisted. I came all this way to fix things between us. Don't throw away what we have. There's nothing left to fix, Brad said firmly. I'm sorry you made the trip out here, but my mind is made up. Amberly looked back and forth between Brad and Lily, realization dawning on her face. It's over, Amberly, Brad said gently. I think it's best if you go back home now. Amberly drew herself up, eyes flashing. Fine, if that's how you want it. But you're making a big mistake. With that, she turned on her heel and stormed off towards the parking lot, disappearing between the rows of apple trees. Brad let out a long breath, shoulders sagging in relief. He turned to Lily with a rueful smile. I'm really sorry about all that, but I'm glad you stood up for yourself. You were amazing. Lily smiled back shyly, heart fluttering. Oh, it was nothing. But inside, she glowed. Brad stepped closer, his eyes never leaving Lily's face. 
It wasn't nothing, he said earnestly. The way you handled Amberly took real courage. I know she said some hurtful things. Lily shrugged, trying to appear nonchalant, even as her pulse quickened, being so near to Brad. I'm used to not being the center of attention, she said lightly. Well, you should be. Brad reached out and tucked a stray lock of hair behind Lily's ear, his fingers lingering for a moment against her cheek. She couldn't help herself and leaned into his touch, but remembering their agreement to keep things platonic between them, she pulled away, cheeks blazing, and forced a laugh. I mean, look at us, she said. You're the most sought-after bachelor in town, and I'm just a face behind a desk. Brad smiled and shook his head, still watching her intently. That's not true, he said softly. You're so much more than that. Lily's heart leaped, but she forced herself to take a deep breath and stay grounded. She stepped back, shaking her head with mock seriousness. No romantic declarations allowed, she said with a grin. We agreed to be friends, remember? Brad laughed and held up his hands in surrender. Right, friends. He grinned ruefully as he ran a hand through his hair. She smiled back at him in relief as he stepped away. Despite having had such an intense moment together, it seemed like they were both still content with keeping things just friends, at least for now. Chapter 10 The scent of antiseptic and lemon-scented cleaners greeted Lily as she walked into the Pine Haven Medical Clinic for her morning shift. She settled in behind the front desk, taking a sip of coffee as she logged into the computer system to review the day's appointment schedule. Immediately, one name jumped out at her, Nancy Caldwell, the mayor's wife, who had paid them a rather odd visit recently. According to Dr. Burrell, Nancy had come in complaining of sudden dizziness, but instead of discussing her symptoms, she had peppered him with casual yet pointed questions about his background and intentions in Pine Haven. The whole thing made him uncomfortable, and it definitely raised Lily's suspicions about the woman's true motives. Right on the dot of her 10 a.m. appointment, Nancy breezed through the clinic doors in oversized sunglasses and a silk scarf covering her hair. Dressed more for a day of leisure than a doctor's visit, Nancy exuded an air of entitlement as she clipped over to the front desk in her heels. Good morning, dear, she drawled. I'm afraid I'm having the most dreadful shoulder pain today. It came on so suddenly. Lily fixed a polite smile on her face. I'm sorry to hear that, Mrs. Caldwell. Let's get you checked in. She could feel Nancy's eyes on her as she typed in the appointment details. Her curiosity was burning, but she held her tongue for the moment. After handing Nancy the clipboard of forms to fill out, Lily glanced down the hallway just in time to see Brad emerging from an exam room. He caught her eye and gave her a little smirk and a wave before coming over. How's it going so far today? He asked, leaning his arm on the counter. Oh, you know, just reveling in the glamorous life of a small town receptionist? Lily joked. Brad chuckled. Well, hang in there. I'll take you for a coffee break later if it gets too crazy. He gave her a flirty wink. Lily blushed and lowered her eyes, just as Nancy stalked up and thrust the clipboard at her. All done, dear. Now, when can the doctor see me about this awful shoulder pain? Brad turned on his most charming bedside manner. I'd be happy to take a look, Mrs. Caldwell. Follow me on back. As soon as they were down the hall, Lily crept as close as she dared to eavesdrop. Pressing herself against the wall, she caught the tail end of their conversation through the exam room door. It's my knee that's bothering me today, Dr. Burl, Nancy was saying. The pain is just excruciating. Lily's eyes widened. Knee pain? What happened to the shoulder? Her suspicions were confirmed. Nancy was definitely faking symptoms for some underhanded reason. The rest of the morning crawled by at a snail's pace. Lily continuously glanced at the clock, willing her lunch break to come faster so she could get over to Java Joy and tell Sophia everything. At 12.15 precisely, she grabbed her purse and hurried out the door, barely taking time to call a goodbye to Brad over her shoulder. The scent of freshly brewed coffee and baked goods enveloped Lily as she pushed open the door to Java Joy and stepped inside. Spying Sophia at their usual table in the back, 
She hurried over. You will not believe the last couple of days I've had, Lily announced, dropping into the empty chair with a huff. Do tell, said Sophia, leaning forward eagerly. Maggie set a frothy cinnamon dolce latte down in front of Lily. Sounds like you could use one of these, honey. Lily took a grateful sip, letting the sweet warmth soothe her nerves before launching into the story. Okay, so you know how Brad and I went apple picking this weekend as friends? Lily began. The other two nodded, waiting expectantly. Well, we were just getting ready to leave for the orchard when who should show up but Brad's awful ex-girlfriend, Amberly? Sophia and Maggie gasped dramatically in unison. No, exclaimed Maggie. The one you overheard him talking to on the phone? Lily nodded. The one and only. She drove up in her fancy car, acting like I was invisible. Sophia shook her head in disgust. That girl has some nerve. Tell me about it, said Lily. So there I was, up on a ladder picking apples while she's down below running her yap, and she just would not stop going on about their relationship and how Brad was making a huge mistake. Lily took an angry sip of her latte while her friends leaned in intently. Finally, I just couldn't take it anymore. I may have accidentally dropped a few apples so they landed smack on top of her head. Lily, Sophia gasped, though she was clearly trying not to laugh. You didn't. No, I didn't. But I thought about it. Lily cringed a little. Let's just say she did not appreciate Pinehaven's charms. She started going on about what a horrible place this is and trying to convince Brad to come back to her. And that's when I sort of lost it. Lily! Maggie cut her off, collapsing into giggles. Lily gave a sheepish grin. I may have gotten a bit carried away, but it felt so good in the moment. The three of them dissolved into laughter until Sophia finally caught her breath enough to ask, So what did Brad do? Lily smiled, remembering. He told Amberly to hit the road and not come back, said he didn't appreciate her disrespecting his dear friend. Sophia and Maggie sighed in unison. That boy's got it bad for you, said Maggie with a knowing wink that made Lily blush. Stop it, we're just friends, she insisted, taking a distracted sip of her latte. But privately, she felt a flare of hope at the thought that maybe, just maybe, Brad felt the same spark between them that she did. Pushing those dangerous thoughts aside for now, Lily dove back into recounting the rest of her dramatic day. So that was enough excitement on its own. But then, things got even weirder this morning at the clinic. She filled them in on Nancy Caldwell's bizarre appointment with ever-changing symptoms, and her suspicion that the mayor's wife was secretly scouting for information. Sophia's eyes narrowed angrily as Lily described the encounter. That woman is nothing but trouble, Sophia declared. We'll have to find a way to stop whatever scheme she's brewing. Do you think it's possible that she's fishing for information to aid her husband's reported revenge plot against Pine Haven? Lily paused mid-sip, her eyes widening at the thought. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. She could be trying to get close to Brad since he's new in town and wouldn't know about the Caldwells' history. Exactly, Sophia agreed, eyebrows furrowed with concern, and it would explain why she keeps coming up with these vague symptoms. She's just trying to get closer to him. Ugh, that woman, Maggie huffed. Can't she just leave people alone? Apparently not, Lily sighed, pushing a stray lock of hair behind her ear. But I'm not going to let her jeopardize everything we've worked so hard for in Pine Haven. We need to keep our eyes open and watch her closely. But carefully, Maggie cautioned, don't go making accusations without proof. The last thing you need is another war with the Caldwells. Agreed. Sophia grinned, giving Lily's hand a reassuring squeeze. And who knows, maybe she's just going through some weird midlife crisis and this will all blow over. Or she's just really bad at remembering which body part hurts. Maggie quipped, causing all three of them to chuckle. Lily knew they had a point. As satisfying as it would feel to confront Nancy directly, she needed to be smart and gather more intel first. Enough about my drama, Lily said, eager to change the subject. What's new here at Java Joy? 
Ooh, I'm so glad you asked. Maggie hopped up and scurried behind the counter, returning with a tray of slightly lopsided golden brown pastries. I've been working on perfecting my apple turnover recipe with the extra apples we had. Try one. Lily and Sophia each took one of the turnovers and bit in. Their eyes widened at the burst of cinnamon apple flavor inside the flaky crust. Mags, these are amazing, said Sophia. Lily nodded, mouth full. After swallowing, she added, Seriously, these are restaurant quality. Way better than those gourmet bakeries in the city. Maggie beamed with pride. You really think so? I was worried they were a little homely looking. It was true that the pastries weren't the most photogenic, bulging with generous apple fillings. But the imperfections just added to their charm. They're perfect, Lily reassured her. In fact, I'm going to take some back for Brad. He was wondering what could be done with all the apples we picked the other day. Do you have any extras? Coming right up. Maggie bustled behind the counter and packed up a box. Here you go, and send Dr. Handsome my best, she added with a playful grin. Lily felt her cheeks grow warm. Oh, stop, he's just a friend. But even as she said it, her heart fluttered, thinking about seeing Brad again. Hey, that reminds me. Sophia clapped her hands together. Ethan and I want to host a Friendsgiving get-together next weekend. You should totally invite Brad. Oh, it's not like that. We're just... Friends, Maggie and Sophia said in unison. That's the whole point. It's a Thanksgiving-style meal shared between friends. I'm thinking Saturday night, Eric will be coming and Maggie. It'll be nice to have you and Brad there, too. Sounds like a couple's thing to me, Lily said. Ha, huh, yeah, right. I'd rather shave my head than be in a relationship with Eric, Maggie groaned. Okay, well, if you're sure it's just for friends? Positive. Sophia nodded as though it was already settled. Tell him it starts at six. Chapter 11 Brad grabbed a small handbasket as he entered Pine Haven's local grocery market, the bells on the door jingling cheerfully to announce his arrival. He headed straight for the fresh produce section, scoping out the vegetables on display. He was on a mission to pick up ingredients to make a green bean casserole for the Friendsgiving dinner that Sophia and Ethan had invited him to. Though the idea of a small, informal Friendsgiving initially sounded unusual to Brad, who was used to elegant catered affairs back in the city, he had to admit he was looking forward to it. There was something charming about these hometown gatherings that made him feel connected to the community. Pinehaven was really starting to grow on him. Over in the produce section, Brad inspected the green beans, looking for the most crisp, vibrant specimens to include. Humming along to the 90s soft rock music coming through the store's speakers, Brad dropped the green beans into his basket with a contented smile. He was getting the hang of this whole small town thing. Basket loaded with vegetables in hand, Brad turned to head down the next aisle. As he maneuvered around a corner, his hand basket bumped into another cart with a clang. Oh, excuse me, I'm so sorry, Brad began politely before looking up and seeing it was none other than Nancy Caldwell. The mayor's wife flashed him a wide smile. Dr. Burl, what a lovely surprise running into you here, Nancy said a little too enthusiastically. Mrs. Caldwell, hi. How are you enjoying our little pine haven so far? Nancy asked with faux sweetness. Getting ready for Thanksgiving, I see. It's been very welcoming, Brad said carefully, hoping to end the conversation soon. But he couldn't completely bury his medical instincts. You know, I've been meaning to ask, how's your knee feeling? Any more problems with pain since your clinic visit? Nancy looked momentarily confused. My knee? Oh, right. That's all cleared up now, thanks to you. She gave an exaggerated wink. Haven't felt a peep of pain or dizziness since you took such good care of me. I knew I was in excellent hands. Glad to hear it, Brad said politely, though internally he was certain now more than ever that Nancy's symptoms had been fake. Her instant shift from claimed knee pain to a miraculous recovery confirmed she was up to something shifty. As Brad turned his cart down the baking aisle, Nancy fell into step beside him. You know, Dr. Burl, I meant to mention... My husband and I are selling our large ranch property just on the outskirts of Pine Haven. It's a simply magnificent piece of land, I must say.
Brad nodded politely, glancing at his list to appear disinterested. I think the ranch would be perfect for an up-and-coming doctor like yourself, Nancy continued insistently. Over 200 acres, a private pond, horse stables, and a spacious main house, custom-built from pine logs. It's quite picturesque. Is that right? Brad murmured, grabbing a can of fried onions. Oh, yes. And it's an exceptional deal. Price to sell quickly. I have a feeling if you saw it, you'd make an offer on the spot, Nancy said with a grin, her eyes glinting. She extracted a business card from her purse and held it out to Brad. Give me a call anytime if you'd like a private tour. I promise. You won't regret it. Thanks. I'll keep it in mind. Brad took the card and slipped it into his pocket without looking at it. Everything about Nancy's pitch raised his suspicions even further. Her enthusiasm seemed forced, and the low price she touted seemed too good to be true. Clearly, she had an ulterior motive for trying to reel him in. Wonderful! I do hope to hear from you soon, Nancy said sweetly, before sashaying away, heels clicking on the tile. Brad watched her go, frown lines deepening. Whatever that woman was scheming, he was going to make sure she didn't succeed. The next morning, Brad arrived at the clinic earlier than usual, a steaming cup of coffee in hand from Lily's favorite cafe down the street. He wanted to surprise her and have a few minutes alone before the hustle and bustle of the day began. As he approached the front desk, he saw Lily sorting through paperwork. Her face lit up with a touched smile when she noticed the coffee. For me, Brad, you shouldn't have, Lily exclaimed gratefully. Of course, only the best for my favorite receptionist, Brad replied, feeling a happy flutter in his chest at her delighted reaction. Lily took a long sip, sighing blissfully as the coffee worked its magic. Thank you. Really. I needed this today. No problem at all. Hey, do you have a minute to look over some patient charts with me? Brad asked. I'd value your take on a few cases. Sure. Lily moved around the desk to stand next to Brad, peering at the open chart in his hands. As she leaned in, Brad caught a whiff of her floral shampoo and perfume. Being this close to her made his pulse quicken. Focus, he reminded himself, tuning back in as Lily pointed out some helpful details in the medical history that he'd overlooked. He was blown away yet again by her intellect and insight and the way the morning sun shining through the windows made her hair glow like honey. Earth to Brad, Lily said with a laugh. Brad blinked, realizing he'd been staring with a dreamy smile. Sorry, just, uh, really appreciate you going over these with me, Brad fumbled, hoping she didn't notice his distraction. Anytime, Lily smiled, handing the charts back. For a moment, their eyes met and held, the air seeming to crackle between them. Just then, the phone rang, breaking the spell. Later that morning, during a lull between patients, Brad pulled Lily aside to update her on his run-in with Nancy Caldwell at the market yesterday. She mentioned that she and her husband are selling some huge ranch on the edge of town, Brad explained. She was really pushing me to look at it, kept saying what a great deal it would be. Seemed a little too eager, if you ask me. Lily's eyes narrowed. That definitely sounds suspicious. I'd be very cautious, Brad. That woman is clearly up to something. As Lily advised, proceeding with care when it came to Nancy and her ulterior motives, Brad found his gaze drawn to Lily's lips as she spoke. The way they curved and moved was utterly mesmerizing. Get it together, Brad told himself sternly, forcing his eyes back up. Lily had made it clear she just wanted to be friends, and he needed to respect that no matter how captivating he found her. Shaking himself out of his daze, Brad said sincerely, You're absolutely right. I'll be on my guard. Thank you as always for having my back, Lily. Of course. What are friends for? Lily replied with an affectionate shoulder squeeze. Brad hoped she couldn't hear his heart pounding. He silently vowed once more not to jeopardize their friendship by making any romantic move on Lily, no matter how strong his attraction to her was becoming. She had asked to take things slowly, and Brad cared about her too much to cross any lines. He would be the good friend Lily deserved. For her sake, he would keep his deeper feelings at bay. At the end of their shift, Brad walked with Lily out to the parking lot as she headed to her car. So, 
Are you getting excited about the Friendsgiving dinner at Sophia's tomorrow night? Lily asked, unlocking her car door. Are you kidding? I've been looking forward to it all week, Brad said enthusiastically. I can't remember the last time I got to do something like this. Lily smiled, charmed by his eagerness over their low-key group dinner. Well, aren't you just the poster boy for small town living now? She teased. What can I say? This place grows on you. Brad laughed. He gazed at Lily, taking in her stylish wrap dress and knee-high boots. Have I mentioned how nice you look today? He added sincerely. Lily blushed, smoothing her hands over her dress self-consciously. Oh, this old thing? She joked, but looked pleased by the compliment. Their eyes met, and Lily smiled radiantly at Brad in a way that made his heart skip. As they said goodbye, their hands accidentally brushed, sending a spark of electricity through them both. Brad watched Lily drive off, that luminous smile still etched in his mind. He couldn't wait to spend more time with her and their new friends. Pine Haven was starting to feel like home, and he had a feeling tomorrow's dinner would only reinforce that. Chapter 12 The mouth-watering aroma of roasted turkey beckoned to Lily as she and Brad approached the door to Sophia's cozy apartment above Java Joy. She knocked, anticipation bubbling within her. Coming, Sophia called out, and the door swung open, revealing her older sister's radiant smile. Ethan stood beside her, his arm draped over her shoulder. Happy Friendsgiving. Sophia pulled Lily into a tight hug, her eyes shining with excitement. I'm so glad you both could make it. Thanks for having us. Brad shook Ethan's hand before following Lily inside. Over her sister's shoulder, Lily's gaze wandered across the warm decor, twinkling string lights, maple and oak leaves, and an autumn cornucopia spilling over with gourds that made the space feel extra inviting. Happy Thanksgiving, you turkeys! Maggie emerged from the kitchen, balancing a tray loaded with mouth-watering appetizers. Her bright red hair bobbed as she set the tray down on the coffee table. Hey, Maggie, Lily said, chuckling at her friend's enthusiasm. Brad couldn't help but laugh as well, clearly charmed by Maggie's infectious spirit. Brad, meet Eric. Ethan gestured towards a lean, dark-haired man who had been chatting with Sophia. He's been managing the properties I recently acquired. Nice to meet you. Brad extended his hand to Eric, who shook it firmly. Likewise, Eric replied, his dark eyes assessing Brad for a brief moment. Eric's great at what he does, Sophia chimed in but don't let him talk your ear off about property values. Hey, I can't help it if I'm passionate about my work, Eric defended himself with a grin. Passionate or obsessed, Maggie quipped, earning herself a few chuckles and an eye roll from Eric. Lily pressed her lips together, suppressing a smile. Trust Maggie to liven up any occasion. She took Brad's arm, leading him toward the sumptuous spread of Thanksgiving dishes on the table. All right, everyone. Sophia beamed, clasping her hands together. We're so grateful and blessed to have all of you here celebrating Friendsgiving with us. I have a lot to be thankful for this year. She smiled lovingly at Ethan, who put his arm around her waist. Now, let's dig in and enjoy this feast. Here, here. Ethan raised his glass and the others followed suit, toasting to friendship and the holiday. As they approached the table, Brad hesitated, nervously holding on to the dish he had brought. He glanced at Lily as if seeking reassurance. I made green bean casserole, he admitted somewhat sheepishly. I hope it's okay. Of course, Lily gave him an encouraging smile. It looks and smells amazing, Brad. She observed the golden, crispy onions on top and breathed in the savory aroma wafting from the dish. I didn't know you could cook. Neither did I, he joked a hint of relief in his voice as he set the casserole down among the other homemade dishes. But, hey, there's a first time for everything, right? Lily's heart swelled with affection for the handsome doctor who had made such an effort to fit in with her friends and family. The fact that he was willing to step out of his comfort zone endeared him to her even more. And it was just a bonus how handsome he looked in his button-down shirt. As they all settled into their seats and began filling their plates, Brad casually cleared his throat. I ran into Nancy Caldwell at the grocery store. She told me about a large ranch property outside of town. 
Turning to Eric, he asked, You're the local real estate expert, right? Do you know anything about it? Lily stiffened in her seat, her fork hovering above her plate as she involuntarily glanced at Sophia and Maggie. The mention of Nancy's name set off alarm bells in her head. The woman was bad news, and Lily didn't want Brad getting involved with any scheme she might be cooking up. She noticed Sophia and Maggie shared her unease, their expressions mirroring her own concern. Eric nodded as he scooped mashed potatoes onto his plate. Ah, uh, yes, the ranch is quite a large piece of land, prime for development or even just as an investment. It's a few hundred acres with a big farmhouse. But keep in mind, its location is quite remote. Brad nodded thoughtfully. Nancy seemed very eager to discuss it with me. I'm considering taking a closer look at the property. It could be a great opportunity. It certainly is a nice place. There could be lots of potential for the right owner. Eric took a long drink of his water. Lily pressed her lips together, hoping he would just drop the subject. She didn't want to ruin the holiday dinner by starting an argument. Well, I'll have to look into it more, Brad mused, seemingly oblivious to Lily's discomfort. I bet property is dirt cheap out here compared to the city. This could be a gold mine. Eric nodded enthusiastically. Very true. And with the way Pine Haven has been growing lately, land values are only going up. You'd be getting in at the ground floor. Lily shifted in her seat again, stabbing a carrot with more force than necessary. She hated the way they were talking about her hometown like it was just some podunk place they could swoop in and make a quick buck off of. We'd have to get it rezoned, of course, Brad continued, his voice taking on that arrogant tone he got whenever he talked business. But I'm sure with my connections, we could get approval to put up some luxury condos or a resort. Really tap into some of that small town potential. It would make a great investment property. That was it. Lily slammed her fork down, the harsh sound cutting through the chatter around the table. Is something wrong? Brad asked, finally noticing her simmering anger. Lily's face turned red as embarrassment and hurt washed over her. She couldn't believe he just said that, belittling the very place she grew up in and loved. Glancing around, she noticed that the jovial mood seemed to have vanished from the rest of the table, too. Pine Haven doesn't need anyone tapping into its potential, she bit out. It's a wonderful small town, not just some blank slate for you to develop. An awkward silence descended. Brad's eyes widened, seeming to realize his mistake. I... I didn't mean it like that, he backtracked. Sophia cleared her throat, attempting to shift the conversation away from the ranch and Brad's thoughtless remark. So, Eric, how are things going with the Stedman's property deal? As the conversation went on, Lily couldn't shake the sting of Brad's words. She poked at her food, feeling the weight of his condescending comment hanging heavy in the air. Why did he have to say that? And why did it matter so much to her? Maggie cleared her throat loudly. Who wants dessert? she asked with forced cheerfulness. She stood and retrieved her lopsided pumpkin pie from the kitchen. Sorry it's a little sunken in the middle, she said as she placed it on the table. I baked this, uh, masterpiece all by myself, she said, trying to suppress a giggle. Wow, Maggie, that's... something. Eric deadpanned, his eyes twinkling with amusement. A few polite chuckles broke the tension. Lily shot Maggie a grateful look, knowing her friend was trying to smooth over the awkward moment. Eric reached for the pie, passing the dessert plates around the table. I'll take an extra big slice. Maybe with all that whipped cream, I won't even notice it's lopsided. Maggie rolled her eyes. Always a critic, Eric. Sophia smiled indulgently. You two are too much, she said, used to their bickering. As they passed around the dessert, Lily avoided looking in Brad's direction, the hurt from his thoughtless comments still stinging. Thankfully, no one mentioned the ranch or his big plans again. After dinner, Lily helped Sophia and Maggie clear the table while still successfully avoiding Brad. Maybe it was childish, but she wasn't quite ready to face him yet. She busied herself scraping plates and stacking them in the sink, trying to keep her mind off of what he'd said. Hey, Lily. 
Maggie whispered conspiratorially, noticing her friend's mood. Don't let Eric's negativity get you down. He's always so quick to jump on the city slicker bandwagon. Sophia chimed in, chuckling. Seriously, though, you know Maggie's always too hard on Eric. But maybe you're being a bit hard on Brad, too? I mean, he didn't move here by choice, and he might not understand Pinehaven like we do. Lily sighed, her heart torn between anger and understanding. She knew Brad hadn't meant any harm, but his words had cut deep. How could she reconcile her feelings for him when he seemed to look down on the place she called home? It was just some small mountain town to him, but Pine Haven was a big part of who Lily was. If he couldn't appreciate this place, he'd never be able to really appreciate her or this life she loved either. Maybe you're right, she murmured, still avoiding Brad's gaze. But it's hard not to take it personally. Sophia placed a comforting hand on Lily's shoulder. Just... Give it some time. I'm sure he didn't mean to upset you. She was still dwelling on Sophia's words as the other two women cleared out of the kitchen. She quietly excused herself and slipped out to the balcony for some fresh air. Leaning on the railing, Lily blinked back frustrated tears. She knew Brad didn't necessarily mean to hurt her feelings with his thoughtless remark. He was still adjusting to small town life after the big city, but being the only one defending Pine Haven tonight had left her drained. The balcony door slid open behind her. Lily sighed, sensing it was Brad before he even spoke. Hey, he said softly. Can we talk for a minute? Lily turned to face him. His expression was sincere, his eyes full of regret. Brad shifted awkwardly before meeting her eyes. I owe you an apology about what I said in there tonight. It was out of line and hurtful, and I'm really sorry, Lily. I spoke without thinking. I know you didn't mean it maliciously, Lily replied with a small smile. But this town is my whole world. It's hard when people assume less just because it's small. Brad nodded. You're absolutely right, and I was an arrogant jerk. Thank you for calling me out, even if it was just by freezing me out with your icy cold shoulder he added jokingly. Lily looked at him, her expression guarded but curious. She appreciated his apology, but her heart was still tender and confused. Brad held out a plate with a piece of pumpkin pie on it, a lopsided smile on his face. Peace offering, he suggested. This slice has the perfect ratio of whipped cream to pie, just the way you like it. Despite herself, Lily smiled slightly at the mountain of whipped cream topping his pie. You're right, that is the perfect ratio, she admitted. Brad's expression softened with relief. I really am sorry, Lily, he said sincerely. I would never want to hurt you or insult your home. Despite his heartfelt apology, though, Lily couldn't shake the tangled knot of emotions inside her. She needed time and space to process everything and figure out where she stood with Brad. Their disagreement felt like something a couple might go through, but they weren't a couple were they? Her thoughts raced, leaving her more uncertain than ever. I accept your apology, but I need some time to think about everything. These past couple of weeks have been a lot to take in. Brad nodded, understanding in his eyes. Of course, take all the time you need. I just want you to know that I'm sorry and I'll do better in the future. No more thoughtless city boy remarks from me, I promise. He smiled at her hopefully. Lily's heartbeat quickened as their eyes met and held. She still felt conflicted, drawn to him, but hesitant to rush into anything. For now, she just needed a little time to sort through her jumbled feelings. I should head home, Lily said reluctantly. Oh, sure, I'll walk you to your car, Brad offered. Lily nodded, butterflies swirling as they said goodnight to Sophia and headed downstairs together. She was grateful they could move past this while still proceeding slowly. Their relationship, if she could even call it that, was worth taking the time to get right. Her emotions regarding him were definitely complicated. She'd have to take some time to figure out exactly where they stood. For now, she was just grateful they were back on friendly terms. Chapter 13 Brad paced back and forth in the small clinic 
feeling absolutely terrible about the arrogant, thoughtless remark he made at Sophia's Friendsgiving dinner. He knew that he had hurt Lily's feelings and damaged the trust between them. As a physician, he was trained to heal, not cause pain. Determined to properly make things right with her again, he decided it was time to take action. Hey, Lily, he called out as she sat behind the reception desk sorting through paperwork. I'm cooking up an idea for you. Well, actually, I'm thinking of cooking up something for both of us. Lily looked up, her long blonde hair framing her face, and raised an eyebrow. Really? she asked, skepticism lacing her voice. What are you planning? Let's call it an apology of sorts. I already accepted your apology the other night, Lily said, stifling a grin. But I suppose I won't object to a little more groveling. Brad laughed, relieved she was willing to give him another chance. Deal. I'll bring my A-game grovel, he joked. But before he could say any more, a young woman stumbled into the clinic, flushed and shivering. Her high fever was evident from across the room, and Brad sprang into action. I'll tell you more later, he promised Lily, guiding the patient to the exam room. In the exam room, Brad quickly assessed the woman and confirmed a positive flu test. He scribbled out a prescription and handed it to his nurse, Jenna, to deliver to the patient. As she turned to go, on impulse, Brad said, Oh, hey, random question for you, Jenna. If I invited Lily over to my place for a nice homemade dinner, do you think she'd actually say yes? Jenna gave Brad a knowing look and a sly smile. She'd be crazy not to say yes, Romeo. Just make her something delicious and go for it. Brad nodded, already planning out the perfect meal in his head. This dinner had to knock Lily's socks off. He was determined to show her how much he cared, how sorry he was for his stupid, small-town comment at Sophia's dinner. The next day, Brad left the clinic early and headed to the grocery store, gathering ingredients for Lily's favorite dishes that Sophia had subtly mentioned in conversation. He smiled to himself, imagining Lily's reaction when she arrived at his place. Back at his apartment, he surveyed the space. It was still sparse from his recent move, barely furnished except for the essentials. If he was going to wow Lily, the ambiance had to be just right. Brad spent the next several hours transforming his apartment into a warm, inviting space. He found some soft throw blankets and plush pillows to adorn the couch. He picked up the antique table Sophia had recommended from a local shop. It immediately added character. He even bought a vase for the wildflowers he planned to present Lily with later. As Brad fussed over all the little details, he caught himself imagining lazy Sundays here in the future with Lily, the two of them eating breakfast together in their pajamas, sipping coffee, and reading the paper. Whoa there, getting way ahead of yourself, he thought, quickly shaking the pleasant but premature image from his mind. Still, on some deeper level, this modest apartment was already starting to feel more comforting and welcoming than his sleek, ultra-modern high-rise place back in the big city ever had. Before he knew it, the next evening had arrived. Right on time, a knock sounded at the door. Brad smoothed his shirt, took a deep breath, and opened it to reveal Lily standing there, looking breathtaking. Hi, he said softly. Wow. Lily breathed, glancing around. Brad, this is really nice. You did all this for me? Of course, Brad replied. Only the best for you. Lily blushed at his sincerity. As they moved inside, she said, I love what you've done with the place. It feels so warm and inviting. Thanks. I, uh, I admit Sophia may have helped out with some decorating tips, Brad confessed with a chuckle. She really wants me to feel at home here. Lily nodded knowingly. She's determined to make you fall in love with Pine Haven, isn't she? Brad's heart skipped a beat at the word, love. Clearing his throat, he said, she just wants me to be comfortable. But honestly, this already feels more homey than my place in the city ever did. Lily's eyes softened at his admission. For a moment, Brad was lost in her gaze, his mind drifting to a future here in Pine Haven, with Lily by his side. He mentally shook himself best not to get ahead of things. For now, he was just grateful for this chance to make things right between them. Anyway, let's get cooking, Brad said, leading Lily into the kitchen. They fell into easy conversation as they prepared the meal together, chopping vegetables, checking the roasting chicken, and mixing up a salad. 
They worked side by side like two cogs in a well-oiled machine, chatting, joking, teasing, and laughing together as they cooked and moved fluidly around each other. No, you have to add the onions first, then the garlic, Lily instructed playfully. Oh, right, my bad, Brad chuckled. Clearly, you're the expert chef here. Their hands brushed as they both reached for a utensil, sending a spark of electricity through them. They caught each other's eye for a heated moment before Lily glanced away shyly. Things flowed smoothly as they worked in tandem, handing off ingredients, trading cooking tools. It was nice, Brad thought, how in sync they were, how comfortable this all felt. When the chicken was done, they both reached to grab it from the oven, pausing as they nearly collided. But neither moved away. Brad found himself close enough to smell her shampoo, and his eyes flicked down to Lily's lips. He froze momentarily, pulse racing as he stood so close to her. Caught up in the intimate moment, he started to lean in, wondering suddenly what it would feel like to kiss her after all this time dancing around their obvious attraction. But the moment was broken by the oven timer's shrill and sudden beeping. They jumped apart, both flushed and laughing nervously. Brad's heart pounded as he turned off the oven. Get it together, man, he told himself. But internally, his heart was still racing as he marveled again at how this kind, beautiful small town girl had managed to so thoroughly and quickly get into his head and under his skin. And the craziest part was, he loved it. He wanted more. Clearing his throat, Brad plated their meals and met Lily's eyes. All right, are you ready for that groveling I promised? The smile on her face nearly melted him. I was joking, really. No groveling necessary. I insist. He set their plates on the table and retrieved the vase he'd filled earlier. Lily's eyes lit up as Brad presented her with the bouquet of wildflowers. These are my favorite, she exclaimed. How did you know? He rubbed the back of his neck bashfully. I, uh, might have asked Sophia what your favorites were, he admitted. Lily, I need to properly apologize for the stupid, thoughtless remark I made at Friendsgiving. I was arrogant and dismissive about small town life, and I'm really sorry I hurt you with my assumptions. The truth is, I've learned more about community, kindness, and what really matters here in Pine Haven these past few weeks than I have in years back in the city, he paused, meeting her eyes, especially from you. Lily's cheeks flushed and her eyes became glassy. Apology accepted. His shoulders relaxed, and he finally felt like they could settle in and get back to normal. As they ate, conversation flowed easily between them once more. The earlier awkwardness from their almost kiss in the kitchen had vanished. Lily opened up about her dreams of becoming a nurse one day and how it had always seemed just out of reach. Brad told her encouragingly that she absolutely could still achieve that goal and he'd be happy to help her in any way. And he meant it. He'd do whatever it took to help Lily reach her dreams. In turn, Brad confided in Lily about the pressures he often felt from his father to focus solely on advancing his big city medical career at the expense of everything else. But lately... I've been questioning if that prestigious job is all I want, Brad admitted. Coming here has shown me what I was missing. Lily smiled, knowing he meant her and this town. Brad gazed at Lily, thinking how he would miss that radiant smile of hers when he had to leave Pine Haven. Trying to lighten the suddenly serious mood, Lily teased, I have to say, Dr. Burrell, I'm impressed that a big shot like you was able to pull off such a delicious meal. That was fantastic. Hey now! Just because I'm a bachelor doesn't mean I can't fend for myself in the kitchen, Brad retorted with mock offense. Their playful banter continued as they cleared the table together. Brad found himself laughing more than he had in ages. No one could make him laugh like Lily could. As the evening wound down, neither seemed eager for it to end. A new, deeper connection had formed between them. When a romantic song came on the radio, Brad extended his hand. Care to dance? Lily smiled and stepped into his arms. They swayed gently, neither taking their eyes off the other. Caught up in the moment, Brad leaned in. This time, Lily didn't pull away. Their lips met in a soft, perfect kiss. All the potent feelings that had been simmering between them ignited in that instant. Lily wrapped her arms around Brad's neck, deepening the kiss as he pulled her closer. They finally broke apart, eyes shining. Brad gently brushed a strand of hair from Lily's face. 
You are so beautiful, he murmured. This extraordinary woman had truly captured his heart. Lily blushed at the compliment, a shy smile spreading across her face. That was nice, she said softly. Brad grinned. Just nice? Lily playfully swatted his arm. You know what I mean. Her expression grew more serious then. She bit her lip, considering her next words carefully. Brad, I really care about you. But I think we should take things slow between us. I don't want to rush into anything too quickly and mess this up. I want to do this right. Brad's heart sank a little at her hesitation, but he understood where she was coming from. Taking things slowly was smart. Of course, he said, tucking a strand of blonde hair behind her ear. We'll go at your pace. The last thing I want is for you to feel pressured. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to make you comfortable. Lily smiled, relieved. Thank you for being so patient with me. I know this is new for both of us. It's new, but it feels right, Brad said, caressing her cheek. Lily nodded. It really does. They shared one more lingering kiss before Lily gathered her things to leave. As Brad walked her to the door, the optimism between them was palpable. This was just the beginning for them. With open communication, they could build something real together. Brad watched Lily drive away, his heart full. He couldn't remember ever feeling this way about someone. For the first time, he was all in. Now he just had to convince Lily of that too. Chapter 14 Lily sighed dreamily, twirling a strand of her long blonde hair. I still can't believe it, you guys. That kiss with Brad was... Well, it was magical. Ooh, tell us everything. Maggie urged, leaning forward with wide eyes and an eager smile. Sophia grinned, sipping her coffee. Yes, we need all the juicy details. Okay, okay. Lily relented, cheeks flushed with excitement. It was just so unexpected, but at the same time it felt right. Like there might be something real between us. Ah, oh, that's so sweet, Maggie cooed, her bright red curls bouncing as she nodded in approval. But I'm nervous about falling for him, Lily admitted, biting her lip. He'll be leaving Pinehaven soon, and we're on two very different paths. Sometimes love can make those paths converge, Sophia said thoughtfully. But only if you let it. The tinkling sound of the Java Joy door chime cut their conversation short as Miss Lena hurried inside, her frail frame practically vibrating with energy. Have you heard? She exclaimed, blue eyes wide with alarm. The Caldwells are plotting revenge. Aren't they always plotting something? Maggie smirked. Yes, but they aren't always so calculated in who they target. Miss Lena placed the back of her hand against her forehead with dramatic flair. What do you mean? Lily asked. It's you. I suspect they're so upset with you Matthews girls exposing them that they are using the people closest to you to get revenge. Realization struck Lily. Brad? Miss Lena nodded, solemnly. I'm afraid so. I heard Nancy was down at the bank talking up some expensive deal she had signed with Dr. Burl and that ranch property the Caldwells used to own. The bank is trying to take it back, but Nancy insists your doctor is going to be providing a windfall of cash to help them keep it in their names. I don't know what that woman is cooking up, but I know it can't be good. Thank you, Miss Lena. Lily turned back to her friends. I'll let Brad know. I really need to get to the clinic anyway. Our schedule is packed again today. Sophia shook her head. That flu is relentless this year. Need me to bring everyone some pick-me-ups later? Maggie asked. Hopefully we won't have that late of a night, but I'll let you know. Thanks, Mags. She grabbed her coffee and hurried out the door. Not much later, Lily stood gaping at the long line of people winding through the medical clinic lobby. Oh my, this flu bug has really taken hold. Brad appeared at her side, his brow furrowed. We'd better get moving, triage the urgent cases first. He gently guided an elderly man to a chair. Sir, just sit here and we'll be with you shortly. Lily nodded, already flipping through charts. The lobby echoed with coughing and muted conversations. She caught snippets as she passed patients. Feels like I've been steamrolled. 
can't keep anything down, even water. Fever's over 102. Lily paused beside a mom holding a lethargic toddler. Poor thing, she murmured, resting her hand on the little girl's forehead. We'll get you both taken care of. She moved on, consulting her notes. The sharp smell of antiseptic mingled with the sour scent of sickness. Lily blinked hard, willing herself to stay focused. Brad appeared at her elbow. How's it looking? His eyes radiated concern. So far, mostly dehydration and fever. We need to keep a close watch for any troubled breathing. Lily checked her watch. I'll grab more flu test kits from the back. Brad nodded. I'll start assessing patients. Hang in there. He squeezed her shoulder gently before moving off. Lily hurried to the supply room, snagging extra masks and sanitizer on the way. This was going to be a long day, but she was determined to power through it. Lily returned to the crowded waiting room, handing out masks and sanitizer. She noticed a woman sitting rigidly in the corner, knees bouncing, face pale. As Lily approached, the woman blurted out, I can't breathe. My chest feels so tight. Am I dying? Lily crouched down. Try to take slow, deep breaths with me. She inhaled and exhaled exaggeratedly. The woman attempted to mimic her, but descended into gasps. Brad appeared with an oxygen tank, fitting the mask gently over her face. Just relax. This will help you get more air. His voice was calm and steady. After a few minutes, the woman's breath evened out. Lily squeezed her hand. Feeling any better? Yes, much. Thank you both. Brad smiled. We'll get you checked out fully, but it looks like an anxiety attack exacerbated by the flu. You're in good hands here. Lily nodded reassuringly before moving on to the next patient. She and Brad worked in sync through the morning, tag-teaming between patients with the help of the other nurses and medical staff. It was all hands on deck. Though exhausted, Lily felt invigorated by their teamwork. With Brad by her side, she could make it through this crisis. They all could. Lily glanced at the clock nearly 1 p.m. Her stomach rumbled, but there was no time for lunch with the waiting room still full. She grabbed another chart when Brad touched her shoulder. Hey, take five minutes. Eat something. I'm okay, doctor's orders. You need to keep your strength up. His eyes radiated concern. Lily sighed, but gave him a grateful smile. She slipped into the break room, where Maggie was brewing a fresh pot of coffee. Hey, girl, I brought you a sandwich from the cafe. Sophia's orders. Maggie waved a takeout bag. You're the best. Lily sank into a chair, quickly devouring the food. The coffee's robust aroma filled the small room. Drink up, too. Can't have you passing out on us. Maggie pressed a cup into her hand. The hot liquid soothed Lily's throat. She exhaled, tension easing from her shoulders. But through the window, the waiting room was still overflowing. Lily gave a wan smile, downing the restorative caffeine. She sat for a few minutes, then stood, steadying herself against a wave of dizziness. Probably just tired, she thought. There were still people who needed her. Brad met her gaze, giving an understanding nod. They still had a long day ahead. Lily powered through the afternoon, pushing her exhaustion aside. The patients kept streaming in, each with their own worries and ailments. She soothed their concerns as best she could while checking vitals and updating charts. As the sunlight faded outside, the clinic's harsh overheads illuminated the never-ending queue. Lily blinked hard, trying to clear the blurriness from her vision. She just needed to get through a few more patients, but gradually the clinic began tilting around her. Brad's voice cut through her haze. Lily, go home, I can wrap up here. No, I'm fine, just a few more. She reached for the next chart but stumbled, catching herself on the counter. Brad grasped her shoulders. You're done for today, I'll handle the rest. Lily started to protest but met his resolute gaze. She nodded reluctantly. Okay, but call if you need anything. I will, now get some rest.
Brad gave her arm a gentle squeeze before turning back to his patient. Lily collected her things, casting one last worried glance around the crowded clinic. She trusted Brad, but hated leaving him on his own. Still, her body screamed for respite. She pushed open the door and made it two steps outside before her legs buckled. The pavement rushed up to meet her. Then everything went black. Lily! Lily! Brad's voice filtered through the darkness as she blinked her eyes open. He knelt next to her, worry creasing his forehead. Just take it easy. You passed out. Lily started to sit up, but the parking lot swayed dizzily. Brad's arm supported her shoulders. I've got you. Let's get you checked out. He lifted her effortlessly and carried her inside, his strong embrace the only solid thing in her spinning world. Lily leaned into his chest, too exhausted to resist. She was safe in his care. For now, that was all that mattered. She drifted in and out of consciousness as Brad examined her. His hands were gentle as he checked her vitals and drew blood. She roused when something cool pressed against her forehead. Your fever's up, Brad said, brow furrowed. How long have you been feeling sick? Lily tried to think through her foggy brain. Just run down the past few days. I thought it was just stress and overwork. Brad nodded, lips pressed in a grim line. You've got the flu that's been going around. With your depleted immune system, it hit hard. You need rest. Lily struggled to sit up, panic rising. But the clinic, the patients... We'll be fine, Brad soothed. Jenna's on call tonight and Dion offered to stick around for a few more hours, too. You need to focus on yourself for once. His voice turned stern. As your doctor, I'm ordering you to take a few days off. Lily started to protest, but was interrupted by a fit of coughing. Brad helped her sip some water until it passed. I can't go home and get my parents sick, she said gently. They're getting older, and this may be too much for them. Will you please hand me my phone so I can call Sophia? Maybe I'll stay there until this passes. But Brad took her hand, his expression serious. I've already talked to Sophia, and she agrees you should stay with me where I can monitor you more closely. Lily started to protest, but Brad gave a wry grin. Doctor's orders. His eyes were full of warmth and care, and Lily felt her resistance fading. She was incredibly tired, Maybe letting someone dote on her would be all right, just this once. Deal, she said finally, mustering a grateful smile. Brad smiled, brushing her hair back. I'll take good care of you, I promise. Lily nodded, a flutter in her chest at his tender touch. Brad helped her to her feet, keeping an arm around her waist for support as they made their way out to his car. The short walk left Lily winded and wheezing. Once at Brad's modern apartment, he got her settled on the plush couch, wrapping her in a soft blanket. Just relax, I'll make you some soup and tea, he said. Lily sank back into the cushions, comforted by Brad's steady presence nearby in the kitchen. The clinking of dishes and aroma of chicken noodle soup soon filled the air. Brad returned with a tray holding a steaming bowl and mug, he sat beside her as she ate, keeping a watchful eye on her pallor and breathing. Thank you for this, Lily said appreciatively. I don't know what I'd do without you. Hey, what are friends for? Brad replied with a crooked smile. Friends. The word gave Lily pause. When had they crossed that threshold? Somehow, her feelings for Brad had deepened without her even realizing. Once finished with her meal, exhaustion overtook Lily once more. Brad noticed her drooping eyelids. Let's get you to bed, he said, helping her up and down the hall to his room. Too tired to think twice, Lily crawled under the covers. Brad leaned down, brushing her hair back and pressing a kiss to her forehead. Sleep well, Lily. I'll be right here if you need anything. Lily's heart swelled as she snuggled into his pillow, surrounded by his scent. Chapter 15 Lily lay shivering in Brad's apartment, a soft blanket wrapped around her shoulders. She groaned, shifting uncomfortably beneath the pile of blankets on his bed. 
Her forehead glistened with sweat. Wisps of blonde hair plastered to her clammy skin. Hey, take it easy, Brad said softly, perching on the edge of the mattress. He pressed a cool washcloth to her temples, dabbing gently. Lily's eyes fluttered open, glazed and unfocused. Brad, she croaked. What happened? You passed out at the clinic, remember? He took her limp hand in his, rubbing his thumb over her knuckles. Exhaustion and the flu, I brought you back here to rest. Lily nodded weakly, letting her eyes fall shut again. I'm so tired and cold and my head hurts. I know, just try to relax. Brad tucked the blankets more snugly around her shivering frame, his chest tightening. Seeing her like this was torture. He wished he could take her pain onto himself. Here, drink this. He brought a cup of water to her lips, supporting the back of her head as she sipped. A little color returned to her wan cheeks. Thank you, she whispered. Brad smiled softly. I'll take care of you. Don't worry about a thing except getting better. As she drifted back to sleep, Brad stayed seated at her side, still clasping her hand. His heart ached, flooded by a protectiveness and tenderness he'd never known. He had never imagined himself settling down in a small town like Pine Haven. But as he looked at Lily, her fragile state igniting a protective instinct within him, he began to consider it. Wasn't happiness worth more than ambition? Could he really walk away from this beautiful, strong woman who had captured his heart? Brad? Lily's voice broke through his thoughts. What are you thinking about? Nothing, he lied, forcing a smile onto his face. Just trying to come up with some jokes, in case laughter really is the best medicine. Please don't, she begged playfully, managing a weak laugh. I don't think I can handle it. Your wish is my command, Brad promised, relieved to see some of her spirit returning. But as he watched her drift back to sleep, her breathing slow and labored, he couldn't shake the feeling that he was at a crossroads. And he knew that soon, he would have to make a choice between the life he had always imagined for himself and the one that seemed to be unfolding right before his eyes. A shrill scream pierced through the darkness, jolting Brad from his restless sleep on the couch. His heart hammered in his chest as he sprang to his feet, all thoughts of his dreams replaced by a single-minded focus on Lily. Brad, no, don't stay. Her voice was hoarse and desperate. He burst into the bedroom, finding her tangled in the bedsheets, face flushed with fever and eyes wide with terror. Her blonde hair was plastered to her forehead, damp with sweat. Shh, it's okay, Lily. It's just a nightmare, he said gently, kneeling beside the bed and placing a cool hand on her burning cheek. You're safe. Please, don't stay here for me. Her words were slurred, feverish, but the emotion behind them was unmistakable. Hey, let's not worry about that right now. He tried to keep his voice light, but the pain of her words stung deeper than he would have thought possible. The important thing is getting you better, okay? Okay. She nodded weakly, tears streaming down her cheeks. Here, let me help you. Carefully, Brad untangled the sheets and adjusted the pillows behind Lily, supporting her back as she leaned against them. Is that better? Thank you, Brad, she whispered, her breathing steadier as the panic receded. Of course. Now, try to get some sleep. I'll be right out there if you need me. He brushed a lock of hair from her face, his touch tender and loving, even though his heart ached at her earlier plea. Promise? The vulnerability in her eyes tugged at him, tying knots in his stomach. Promise, he reassured her, swallowing the lump in his throat. Sweet dreams, Lily. Good night, Brad. He closed the door softly behind him, leaning against it for a moment to collect himself. His heart felt like it was being squeezed in a vice, her words echoing relentlessly in his mind. Don't stay here for me. He groaned under his breath, wiping away an unexpected tear. It wasn't fair. He had finally started to admit his feelings for her, only to have them thrown back in his face by her fevered dreams. But even as his heart broke, he knew that what mattered most was Lily's well-being. And if that meant letting her go, then so be it. With a heavy sigh, Brad returned to the couch and stared at the ceiling, sleep eluding him, as he tried to come to terms with the impossible decision that lay ahead. 
The first light of dawn filtered through the curtains, casting a warm glow on the kitchen countertop. Brad rubbed his eyes and sighed, the night's events haunting him like a persistent shadow. He mechanically scooped coffee grounds into the filter, the rich aroma doing little to lift his spirits. Awful fever dreams, he muttered under his breath as he pressed the brew button on the machine. Why had Lily said those things? Did she truly not want him to stay in Pine Haven, or was it just her illness talking? The questions swirled around in his head like a hurricane, and he found himself caught in the eye of the storm. Maybe she's afraid of getting hurt, he reasoned, wrapping his hands around the steaming mug of coffee. Or maybe she doesn't think I'm serious about staying. As Brad poured a second mug, his phone rang. Caller ID flashed the city hospital's number. With a frown, he answered, Brad Burrell. Brad, it's Roger Collins. How's my star surgeon? The familiar voice of the chief of surgery boomed on the other end of the line. Brad stiffened. Roger, I'm, uh, fine. Listen, I know your temp job there in Pine Haven is almost up. We want you back here. I'll cut right to the chase, Burl. We have an opening for that senior surgeon position I mentioned before, and your name came up. We think you'd be perfect for the job. Brad's grip on the phone tightened, torn between excitement and dread. This was the opportunity he'd been working towards his entire career. But now, faced with the possibility of leaving Lily behind, it felt like a sucker punch to the gut. Thank you, Dr. Collins, he managed, swallowing hard. I appreciate the offer, but I... I need some time to think about it, Brad said hesitantly, his heart pounding in his chest as he weighed his options. Take all the time you need, Burl, but I'd highly recommend coming back to the city for a few days to discuss the details in person. It's a big decision, I know, but we believe you're the right man for the job, and I think you'll agree after we meet. Brad paced the length of his kitchen, his thoughts battling each other like warriors on a battlefield. He had always wanted this promotion. It was the culmination of years of hard work and sacrifice. Yet, as he glanced at the closed bedroom door where Lily lay, her fevered brow and frightened cries from her nightmares still fresh in his mind, he knew that walking away from her would be the hardest thing he'd ever done. You there, Brad? He glanced toward the bedroom. Lily slept inside, her future intertwined with his, but it wouldn't hurt to hear Dr. Collins out at least. Okay, I'll come back for a few days. Brad agreed, the words tasting like ash in his mouth. Excellent. We'll set up a meeting when you get here. Safe travels, Burl. Clutching the phone, Brad couldn't shake the memory of his father's stern, unyielding face, warning him never to let a woman derail his ambitions. It was the mantra he had lived by, the driving force behind every achievement in his life. But now, as he stared at the warm mug of coffee in his hands, the bitter liquid, a stark contrast to the sweet taste of Lily's laughter, he wondered if maybe, just maybe, his father had been wrong. Lily groaned, the sound cutting through the tense silence that had settled over the apartment after Brad's phone call. The bedroom door was ajar, revealing her pale face twisted in discomfort as she shifted under the covers. Brad's heart tightened, and he realized he couldn't bear to leave her like this. Good morning, sunshine. He entered the room slowly, offering her a small, reassuring smile. Just hang on, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, she whispered, closing her eyes again. Brad hurried into the kitchen, his mind racing as he tried to think of what he could do to help Lily feel better. He knew that she needed something light to eat and drink, but his culinary skills were limited at best. With a determined nod, he grabbed a loaf of bread and a plate. He carefully sliced a piece of bread and placed it in the toaster, watching it with laser focus as it turned a perfect golden brown. Come on, come on, Brad muttered to himself, willing the toast to cook faster. He didn't want to leave Lily alone for too long, especially while she was so ill. Finally, the toast popped up, and Brad carefully spread a thin layer of butter on it before placing it on the plate. He poured a glass of water and took a deep breath, hoping that his simple offering would be enough to help Lily on her road to recovery. Here you go, he said softly as he approached her bedside balancing the plate of toast and the glass of water in his hands. I made you some toast and got you some water. It's not fancy, but maybe it'll help. Thank you, Brad, she whispered, her eyes half-lidded as she tried to sit up. He quickly moved to support her back with one arm, careful not to jostle the plate or glass. Easy now, don't push yourself too hard, 
he cautioned, his concern evident in his voice. Just take a few bites and let me know if you need anything else. Lily took a small bite of the toast, chewing slowly as she looked up at him, gratitude shining in her eyes. It's perfect, she murmured, taking another bite before washing it down with some water. Good, I'm glad, Brad said, relief washing over him. Her cheeks seemed less flushed, her fever seemingly having broken. You look better already. Thanks to you, Lily replied, offering him a weak smile. I don't know what I would have done without you. He watched her nibble on the toast, relief washing over him as her strength seemed to return with each bite. Though her fever had broken, dark circles still hung under her eyes, evidence of the toll her illness had taken. Do you remember anything from last night? Brad asked gently. You were pretty out of it for a while there. Lily's brow furrowed as she tried to think back. No, not really, she said after a moment. It's all kind of a blur. Brad nodded, though uncertainty gnawed at him. Had she meant what she'd said in her delirium about not wanting him to stay? Or had it merely been the nonsensical ramblings of feverish dreams? He wished he could ask her directly, but now didn't seem like the right time. She needed rest, not his insecurities dumped at her feet. Well, try to take it easy today, okay? He said instead, taking her empty plate. I've got to head to the clinic but call me if you need anything. Promise, Lily reassured him with a gentle smile. Brad leaned down, kissing her forehead. As much as it pained him to leave her, duty called. Lives depended on him at the clinic. He lingered in the doorway for a moment, watching Lily sink back into the pillows and close her eyes. His heart swelled looking at her, this woman who'd so quickly become his whole world. Gathering his things for another long day at the clinic, Brad stepped out into the morning sunlight, pausing to take a deep breath. The cool mountain air helped clear his mind, though it did little to settle the conflict in his heart. Part of him thrilled at the opportunity back in the city, a promotion he'd worked years to attain. This had been his dream once, to rise to the top of his field, respected and renowned. But that was before Pine Haven, before Lily. Now his ambitions didn't seem to matter so much, not when compared to lazy mornings on the porch swing, her head resting against his chest. Quiet nights by the fire, her fingers trailing lightly over his skin. A lifetime of shared laughter, tears, dreams. Could he really walk away from that future? And if he stayed, would he grow to resent her for anchoring him here? Too many questions, and no easy answers. With a shake of his head, Brad strode purposefully towards his car. He couldn't solve it all now. For the moment, people needed him. There would be time to untangle the rest later. He slid into the driver's seat, gazing up at the little apartment one last time. Somewhere within those walls, his heart remained tucked snugly in Lily's gentle hands. Chapter 16 Lily hummed to herself as she finished up paperwork at the front desk of the clinic. She was thrilled to be back at work now that she'd fully recovered from her illness, thanks to Brad's devoted nursing. As if on cue, Brad came up behind her, placing a gentle hand on her back. How's my favorite patient doing today? Lily turned, beaming at him. Right as rain, thanks to my wonderful doctor, she said with a laugh. Brad smiled back at her, his eyes twinkling with affection. He leaned down and kissed her lightly on the lips, before pulling away again. If you keep looking at me like that, he said teasingly, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to concentrate on my patients. Lily giggled and swatted him playfully on the arm. Oh, hush, she scolded good-naturedly. Their moment was interrupted by an elderly couple coming in for their appointment. Brad quickly stepped away from Lily and cleared his throat before turning towards them with a friendly smile. Welcome. How can I help you? He asked all traces of his earlier teasing gone now as his professional demeanor asserted itself once more. Lily watched fondly from behind the desk as Brad began checking over his new patients, already knowing what an amazing job he would do taking care of them, and realized something. This was what love looked like in practice. Moments like these when you put someone else's needs ahead of your own desires, because you know it's right, and because they matter more than anything else in this world to you. Love. It was a strange word, she thought, as she worked it over in her mind. 
Was this love? Was she falling in love with Brad? Thinking back on their time together, Lily realized that she had never felt this way about anyone before. She was drawn to him, to the easy way they fit together, like puzzle pieces that had always been meant to be side by side. But could she really be falling in love with him? And if so, what did that mean for their future? For a moment, Lily let herself fantasize, imagining a life with Brad by her side, lazy summer afternoons spent exploring the woods, cozy winter nights curled up by the fire, long talks about everything and nothing. It was a beautiful dream, one that made her heart swell with happiness. But then reality crashed down on her once more. Brad had made it clear that he was leaving Pine Haven, and soon. Yes, she was falling in love with him, hard and fast. But what about his dreams? His ambitions? Lily knew that Brad had a bright future ahead of him, one that might not include her. Was she being selfish by wanting him to stay? Just then, Jenna walked by and whistled teasingly. Looks like someone's feeling better. Lily quickly pulled her gaze away from the handsome doctor, cheeks flushing slightly. You caught me, she said with a forced laugh. But her thoughts remained on him through the rest of the afternoon. After her shift, Lily hurried to Sophia's apartment where her sister and Maggie had agreed to meet and chat about their plans for handling Nancy Caldwell. Lily still hadn't mentioned Miss Lena's latest news to Brad. She was hoping to get to the bottom of it first, or at least formulate some kind of loose idea on how to handle that insufferable woman. So, what's the plan? Sophia asked, leaning forward eagerly. How are we going to deal with the Caldwells? Maggie nodded in agreement, her eyes focused. We need to be proactive about this, not just wait for them to attack us. Lily took a deep breath, her mind racing. Miss Lena's news had been a shock. Apparently, the Caldwells were planning to take over the town and bring Lily's friends and family down, one way or another. But how to stop them? First things first, Lily said slowly. We need to gather information, find out what they're planning, and how. That means we need eyes and ears everywhere. Trust me, Maggie said with a sly grin. With all the gossip floating through the coffee shop every day, I've got the eyes and ears covered. Good, but most importantly, we have to stop Brad from buying that ranch. It's clearly a scam. But Sophia looked thoughtful. Maybe Brad is truly interested, not realizing the risk. He could get a good deal out of Nancy, and if we play our cards right, the Caldwells would get exactly what they deserve in the end, nothing. I'm sure Nancy's already thought of all of that. If they're really at risk of losing the property in foreclosure, then she'll be desperate to make something work. I don't want to play their games. Besides, Lily sighed. Brad's not sticking around long enough to truly care about that property, anyway. What do you mean? Maggie scooted closer on the couch. He's leaving, you guys, Lily said miserably, sinking onto Sophia's couch. Brad got some big job offer back in the city. He'll be gone any day now. Sophia and Maggie exchanged a worried look. Oh, honey, Sophia murmured. I was so stupid to let myself fall for him. Lily berated herself. Of course it was doomed from the start. We're on completely different paths. Have you talked about doing long distance? Maggie suggested. It could work. I saw this movie once. But Lily cut her off with a sad shake of her head. My whole life is here. I could never leave Pine Haven. She bit her lip, holding back frustrated tears. And it's not fair to ask Brad to give up his dream job either. He worked so hard to get where he is. Lily's throat tightened as she fully accepted the harsh truth. There's just no way to compromise. No matter what, one of us has to sacrifice everything. And either way, we'd end up resenting each other. A tear slipped down her cheek. Sophia wrapped a comforting arm around her. I'm so sorry, Lily, she said gently. I know how much you care for him. All you can do is enjoy the time you have left together, Maggie added, uncharacteristically somber. Lily nodded, wiping her eyes. As painful as it was, 
she had to start accepting that her time with Brad was limited. Still, the thought of losing him made her heart clench. As the conversation continued, Lily's mind began to wander once again to Brad. She couldn't help but think about how much she would miss him when he left. The way his touch would send shivers down her spine, the sound of his laughter filling the air, the way he looked at her with those sparkling eyes. But she knew that dwelling on her feelings wouldn't help anything. She needed to focus on the task at hand, stopping the Caldwells from taking over Pine Haven. As they talked, an idea began to form in Lily's mind. It was risky, but it just might work. Guys, I have an idea, she said suddenly, sitting up straighter on the couch. What if we could get proof that the Caldwells are planning something illegal? Then we could bring it to the authorities and shut them down before they have a chance to do any real damage. Sophia and Maggie looked at each other, both intrigued and cautious. That sounds promising, Sophia said. But Nancy knows what happened last time we started poking around into their affairs. Surely she's got everything locked down this time. You give her too much credit, Lily said as the idea really began to take shape in her mind. Besides, she's already offered us an open door into her scheme. Maggie bounced eagerly on the cushion. I like where this is going. Please continue. Brad, she's desperate to sell him that ranch, which I don't even know if she can legally do anymore if that bank has taken it over already. But what if we played along? What if Brad and I drive over and hear her out, pretend we're in love with the place, and play right into her hand? Sounds dangerous, Sophia said. Not at all. We won't sign anything without talking it over with our people. And by our people, obviously, I mean the authorities. I think it's genius, Maggie clapped, and risky. Just promise me you'll play it safe, Sophia said. I promise. Chapter 17 The late afternoon sun filtered through the golden leaves as Brad's car bounced along the dirt road. Lily leaned against the passenger door taking in the meadows dotted with grazing horses. Wow, would you look at that view, Lily breathed, as Brad's car rounded a bend, revealing the sprawling ranch nestled amid the rolling green hills. Brad let out a low whistle. I've seen postcards less picturesque than this. It's like a painting. Lily gave him a wry smile. Too bad we know the current owner is a snake who's just trying to swindle you. Don't you worry, we'll outfox her, Brad replied with a wink lightly squeezing Lily's hand. Their plan was to appear completely enthralled with the property, like two lovesick newlyweds envisioning their future. They pulled up the long gravel driveway toward the charming ranch-style house. Brad leapt out and raced around to open Lily's door with an exaggerated flourish. Your palace awaits, my queen. Lily burst out laughing as she took his offered arm. Laying it on a bit thick there, my king, Brad grinned. Nonsense, you deserve the royal treatment. He leaned in close as they strolled up the path toward the welcoming front porch. Lily's eyes sparkled up at him. Well, maybe you deserve the royal treatment too. Brad's heart swelled. With Lily, everything felt possible. For a moment, he let himself get lost in the fantasy, imagining this picturesque place becoming their own slice of paradise. Ready to play our parts? He asked, winking at her. Ready as I'll ever be? Good. Brad kissed her cheek. Remember, we're madly in love and planning to get married, planning our future together on this ranch. Right. She nodded, taking a deep breath. You know, I'm going to lay it on thick just to make sure Nancy buys it. His comment made Lily blush, and the little grin that followed lit him up inside. He loved making her smile like that. Go ahead, just don't get carried away, she warned playfully. Before they could knock, the front door swung open to reveal Nancy Caldwell, her piercing eyes looking them up and down. Well, isn't this precious, she said flatly. Come on in. Brad gave Lily's arm a reassuring pat as they stepped inside, ready to convince Nancy they were head over heels for each other and destined to live happily ever after on her ranch. As they began their tour of the charming old house, Brad spun tales of the domestic bliss they'd share here. Just picture it. Lazy weekend mornings spent cooking pancakes together in that spacious kitchen over there, lounging by the fire and reading in that cozy window nook off the living room, falling asleep on the porch swing overlooking the pond after long days working on the ranch. Lily smiled and played along. Ooh, 
we could string up some cute twinkle lights along the porch railing and get one of those big wooden porch swings right there facing the water so we can drink our morning coffee and watch the sunrise. I'll build it myself, Brad declared cheerfully. He paused, suddenly self-conscious. Despite their charade, Brad found himself picturing a life here with Lily, the sunshine warming their faces as they sat on the porch swing, laughing together. The patter of little feet running through the rooms. He was surprised to feel a pang of longing. Glancing at Lily, he wondered if she felt it too. Her eyes were bright as she took in their surroundings, a soft smile playing on her lips. He leaned in close enough to feel her silky hair tickling his lips and whispered, What do you think? She tucked a loose strand of hair behind her ear, her cheeks flushing slightly pink. It really is a pretty nice daydream. Their eyes locked, the playful ruse fading away. Drawn like a magnet, Brad slowly leaned in closer. The scenic countryside and charming property itself paled in comparison to this powerful connection between them. But just before their lips met, someone loudly cleared their throat. Nancy Caldwell stood there on the porch beside them, regarding the cozy pair with a sour expression. Well now, I see you two like the place, Nancy said a little too brightly, clearly trying to mask her irritation at their romantic moment. Brad subtly stepped back from Lily, trying to appear relaxed as if they hadn't just been interrupted. It's really incredible out here, Ms. Caldwell, he replied politely, but we do have some questions for you first before making any decisions. Nancy waved her hand dismissively. I'll give you the bargain price of a lifetime. No need to nitpick all the details. She extracted a lengthy contract from her large, ostentatious designer handbag. Just sign right here on the dotted line and we'll call it a done deal. I guarantee you won't find a better offer on a property like this anywhere. Brad tensed, his natural alarm bells ringing at her overly casual attitude toward the huge financial decision. He wanted to protect both himself and Lily. Don't you think we should review the contract thoroughly first before signing? He asked cautiously. Our agent will want to look everything over. Nancy's smile hardened, her previously bubbly demeanor starting to crack. Oh, nonsense. It's just standard legalese. Nothing you need to worry about. I'll walk you through all the particulars myself. But Lily jumped in, backing up Brad's hesitation. We really do need our real estate agent Eric's opinion. He knows what specifics to look for in a contract like this. Nancy's facade fully slipped at that, her smile briefly morphing into a scowl of irritation before she quickly smoothed her features back into polite pleasantry. Of course, dear, she said with exaggerated patience. But I must warn you, I'd hate for that bargain basement price I'm offering to go up if we delay too long. You know what they say about waiting around. Easy deals can disappear quick. She gave a grating, high-pitched laugh. But Brad stood firm, refusing to let her pressure tactics sway him from proceeding with due caution. A deal this major required time and thought, not split-second impulse. No need to threaten us with fee hikes he responded calmly. Making smart, informed choices is always worth the wait. We'll be in touch once we've consulted our agent and had time to thoroughly consider your very generous offer. He gave her a polite but dismissive smile signaling the discussion was over for now. Sensing she wasn't going to strong arm them into a rushed decision today, irritation flashed across Nancy's face again before she covered it with a plastered on smile. Of course, take your time. No rush at all, she said with thinly veiled frustration. She hastily shoved the contract back into her oversized handbag. I'll await your call, but don't leave me waiting too long. With a high, grating laugh, she turned and strode away from them across the porch, heels clicking on the weathered boards. Wait, Brad followed her down the stairs. The contract, can we please take it to review everything tonight? Nancy didn't even attempt to hide her scowl this time. She couldn't say no. Not if she really wanted to sell the place, but saying yes meant exposing herself and that's exactly what Brad and Lily needed. Fine, she huffed loudly and shoved the documents in his hand, but I'll need an answer no later than tomorrow afternoon. I do have other interested parties, you know. And with that, she stormed off toward her dusty SUV. When she was out of earshot, Lily murmured approvingly under her breath, nicely played, holding your ground. Brad puffed his chest out in mock bravado. Thanks, I can keep my cool under pressure. Couldn't let her back us into a corner. Lily smiled and playfully swatted his arm. My hero. 
As they leaned on the porch railing, looking out over the sprawling, picturesque landscape, Brad grew thoughtful. You know, despite the wicked witch of the prairie over there, it really would be amazing to live on a beautiful property like this someday. Fresh air, open space, stunning scenery. Lily nodded dreamily. It's so peaceful out here, but I'm sure you'd miss the excitement of city life before long. She glanced over at him. Big shot doctor like you is probably eager to get back to the action once your clinic assignment ends. Brad thought for a moment, realizing how much he had changed since first reluctantly coming to Pine Haven, how much Lily had changed him. Maybe I'm not the same guy who arrived here a few months ago. I think settling down in a place like this with the right person could make anywhere feel like paradise. Lily blushed faintly, ducking her head in that cute way she did whenever suddenly shy. Hypothetically speaking, if you did stay on here, it wouldn't get too boring for you? She asked. Brad gently tipped her chin up so their eyes met again. With you? Never. I'd want to be wherever you are. Lily's lips parted slightly as she gazed up at him. Brad's heartbeat quickened being so close to this incredible woman. If only there was a way to freeze this moment and make the rosy future they imagined together a reality rather than just idle daydreams. But the atmosphere was broken by the crunching sound of Nancy's heels on the gravel drive as she headed for her ostentatious car, making it clear their tour was over for now. With a reluctant sigh, Brad took Lily's hand and they headed for his own vehicle. The drive back into town was filled with pensive silence, both absorbed in their own thoughts about the future. When they reached Lily's house, she gave Brad a searching look like she wanted to say something, but then just smiled softly and squeezed his hand before getting out. Alone in his apartment later that night, Brad's thoughts kept drifting back to the sunny front porch of the ranch, imagining sitting there swinging with Lily as they watched the sunset behind the pond. He could practically see her radiant smile, hear her infectious laugh. With a groan, Brad rolled over and glanced at the clock, 2 a.m. He had been lying awake for hours, but was no closer to a solution. There had to be some way to stay in Pine Haven, to build a life with Lily without sacrificing his hard-earned career. But the options all seemed impossible. Chapter 18 Lily shivered, rubbing her mittens together as she and Brad hurried down Main Street. Their breath came out in frosty puffs. It seemed that winter arrived just in time to freeze Nancy and Thomas Caldwell out forever. Are you sure about this? Brad asked, glancing over at her. Lily nodded firmly. It's our only chance to expose her lies. If we don't do this now, that family will just find someone else to manipulate. It never stops with them. I know, I just hope we're not making a mistake. Brad's brow furrowed with doubt. Lily felt that same uncertainty twisting in her gut. This plan seemed crazy now that they were here. But it was too late to back out. They arrived at the bank and paused outside the doors. Lily met Brad's eyes, seeing her own apprehension reflected back. Well, here goes nothing, Brad said. He held the door open for her. Lily smoothed her mittens over her coat, composing herself. She could do this. They could do this. It was time to take down Nancy once and for all. Her stomach was a knot of anxiety as she and Brad entered through the imposing marble lobby of the stately Pine Haven Bank and Trust. She sent up a silent prayer that they would be able to pull this off convincingly and get the evidence they needed. So much was riding on this risky gambit. As if sensing her turmoil, Brad gave her shoulder a gentle, reassuring squeeze and murmured, Hey, We've got this. Just take a deep breath and stick to the plan we talked through. Comforted slightly by his calming presence, Lily nodded and attempted to will her hands to stop shaking. She just desperately hoped that when put to the test, they'd both be able to smoothly execute their parts in this nerve-wracking scheme. The stakes were enormous, but it was too late to turn back now. Afternoon, folks, the sheriff drawled. We've got everything set up in the conference room. Lily nodded, her throat too tight to speak. This was really happening. Just then, the doors opened again behind them. Lily whirled around to see Eric striding in, a frown pulling at his lips. Saw her park out front, he said briskly. Nancy's on her way in. 
Lily's pulse kicked up a notch. She exchanged a tense look with Brad. Let's get into position then, the sheriff said. He slipped away to stand out of sight near the front entrance. The banker retreated behind the counter, busying himself with files while Eric slipped out of sight around the corner. Lily perched on a chair in the lobby, clutching her mittens in her lap. Brad sat next to her, elbows on his knees, waiting. Right on the dot of 10 o'clock, the clicking of Nancy's high heels on the marble floor signaled her punctual arrival. Lily fought back a visceral surge of disgust and revulsion at having to play nice with this manipulative woman, mustering up every ounce of acting ability she possessed to plaster a polite, friendly smile on her face instead. For now, at least for a short while, she had to keep up the charade and pretend to go along with Nancy's ruse if they had any hope of finally bringing her down. Good morning, shall we get right down to signing this purchase agreement for that magnificent ranch? Nancy trilled cheerily as soon as they were seated around the heavy oak conference table with the bank president and town sheriff lurking surreptitiously just outside the boardroom. Lily exchanged an almost imperceptible nod with the two men through the slit of the barely open doorway. It was now or never. Time to put their risky plan in motion. I've brought the final contract documents all ready for you, Brad. Nancy continued breezily as she slid a thick manila folder across the polished table toward him. This locks in that very special discounted price we discussed on the ranch. Go ahead and sign on the dotted line and then it's all settled. I'll walk you through all the particulars if you have any questions, of course. Right on scripted cue, Eric then strode purposefully into the hushed boardroom. So sorry I'm late, everyone. There was an awful wreck that had traffic backed up for miles on Main Street. He settled into the vacant chair beside Brad and reached for the contract folder. Definitely a good idea to have me review this thoroughly before signing. Let me just take a few minutes here to comb through the fine print. Eric's forehead creased in consternation as he scanned the document. Oh my, this just won't do. Nancy's confident facade flickered almost imperceptibly. I don't know what you're referring to. Dr. Burl and I have already agreed to the terms listed there, so go on then. She waved her hand impatiently in Brad's direction. Sign it. Wait just one minute. Brad turned to Eric. What do you see? Well, for starters, this clause here about transferring mineral rights is highly irregular and would cost you a fortune. Trying to conceal the spark of panic in her eyes, Nancy laughed with obviously forced, airy nonchalance. Oh my, there must have been an innocent mix-up with my husband handling some of the paperwork. But no matter. The Caldwells pride ourselves on always honoring a deal in good faith. Lily had to resist the urge to openly scoff in disbelief at Nancy's audacity. Here she was, clearly cornered at last, yet she continued clinging to her usual web of lies and playing the victim. Well, not this time. Today, justice would finally be served. She gave a nod to the sheriff through the crack in the door, and he was quick to jump into action. Ah, Nancy, the sheriff said, stepping up to the table just the person we were waiting for. It's come to our attention that the contract you drew up for Brad's property is not exactly... kosher. Her smile faltered as she took in the scene before her. The sheriff, Eric, Lily, and Brad. They all stared at her, a united front against her manipulations. I'm not sure what you mean, Nancy replied, ice in her tone. Eric stepped forward, holding a worn piece of paper, this contract right here, he said, it's full of errors. If Brad had signed it, he would have lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. It must have been an oversight on my part. Color drained from Nancy's face as she stared at the contract, realizing she'd been exposed. Her calculating, cold-hearted intentions laid bare for all to see. An oversight that would have conveniently lined your pockets. Lily burst out angrily. She was done playing Nancy's games. You never wanted what was best for Pine Haven or Brad. This was all about you and your husband. Nancy's eyes flashed at Lily's accusation. Brad put a hand on Lily's arm, both restraining and reassuring. The woman glared at the group, her composure finally cracking. You have no proof of anything. My husband will hear about this and you'll regret ever crossing us. 
The sheriff stepped forward undeterred. Your husband has no power here anymore. This town has wised up to your games. Nancy scoffed. We'll see about that. Thomas will be back and he'll make all of you pay. I'm afraid that won't be happening, the sheriff said firmly. The bank is reclaiming this property due to your failure to make payments. You and Thomas are done here. Nancy looked around wildly, but saw only resolute faces staring back at her. Her shoulders slumped in defeat as the sheriff firmly escorted her out. As the door slammed shut behind Nancy, the tension in the room dissipated, replaced by the relief that justice had been served. Good riddance, Lily whispered under her breath. Congratulations, guys. Eric stood and closed his briefcase. I think you might have finally chased them off for good. He said his goodbyes as they stepped out of the conference room and left them there in the brisk air outside of the bank. I can hardly believe it, but we really did it. We caught her red-handed, Lily marveled, still trying to process everything that had just transpired. The full impact had yet to sink in. It seemed surreal. Caught up in the adrenaline still pumping through his veins, Brad let out an exuberant whoop of victory and swept her up into an effusive bear hug spinning her around right there on the sidewalk before setting her down again. You were absolutely amazing in there, Lily. Total steel nerves. I couldn't have done this without you. You're the best partner in crime a guy could ask for. Lily found herself laughing almost giddily along with Brad, the world feeling sunny and full of promise again now that Nancy had been exposed and they had come through this ordeal trumpet. Hooking her arm through Brad's, she tilted her face up to the azure sky, breathing in the crisp autumn air. After the stress of the confrontation, she was suddenly ravenous, scheming and enacting elaborate takedowns really worked up an appetite. This victory calls for some serious celebratory treats. I'm thinking something with massive amounts of chocolate, Lily suggested playfully, feeling lighter than she had in days. She led Brad in the direction of Sophia's cozy corner cafe. Maggie's triple chocolate brownies seem like the only appropriate choice. But at the mention of indulgent desserts, Brad's handsome, cheerful face abruptly clouded over, and he released her arm, taking a step back. I'm sorry, Lily, but I can't. I have to get going. Lily was stunned by his sudden change in attitude. What had she said? What do you mean? Brad quickly averted his gaze as he shoved his hands in his pockets. I have to go pack my bags, he muttered. I'm driving back to the city first thing in the morning. Lily's heart dropped into her stomach. This is what she had originally wanted, for him to go back home and put Pinehaven behind them both. So why did it suddenly feel so wrong? She watched helplessly as Brad slowly backed away from her, not meeting her eyes. He was leaving. And this time there would be no convincing him to stay. Taking a shaky breath, Lily gathered up her courage and forced a smile onto her face. She refused to let him see how much his departure was affecting her. Well, I suppose we can celebrate when you come back to town, she said lightly, pretending to be unfazed. And you will come back, right? Brad paused, his eyes meeting hers for the first time since he'd announced his departure. I don't know he said quietly. I need to figure some things out, but I promise I'll keep in touch. Lily nodded, her throat tight. Okay, safe travels, Brad. With a final reluctant glance, he turned and walked away, disappearing around a corner. Lily was left standing alone on the sidewalk, the last remaining leaves of autumn seeming suddenly muted and gray. She couldn't shake the feeling that something was irrevocably changed between them now something more than just a temporary physical attraction. And somehow she managed to keep her emotions in check until she was safely behind her childhood bedroom door. Then her tears flowed freely until there were no more tears to cry. Chapter 19 The wall of noise and crowds hit Brad like a sledgehammer as he stepped outside the parking garage into the bustling city. After months living in the peaceful community of Pine Haven, the constant traffic, sirens, shouting, and pollution felt like a jarring assault on his senses. Nice to see you back, Dr. Burrell, greeted Dr. Collins, appearing beside him with an outstretched hand. 
Dr. Collins, Brad replied, accepting the handshake, but not sharing the enthusiasm. As they walked through the prestigious city hospital together, Brad's attention was drawn to the arrogant surgeons congregating in small groups, their voices competing with one another as they boasted about their latest cases and accomplishments. Brad couldn't help but feel a sense of disillusionment. This was the world he had dedicated his life to, but it all felt so hollow and meaningless now. Brad, are you all right? Dr. Collins asked, noticing his distant expression. Brad shook his head, trying to snap out of his funk. Yeah, sorry. It's just a lot to take in. I understand. It can be overwhelming, especially after being away for so long. But you'll adjust soon enough. Adjust, Brad thought bitterly. Was there any real adjustment to be made to a life that felt so unfulfilling? Here's the paperwork for your promotion, Dr. Collins said once they'd reached his office, handing over a thick stack of documents. Sign these, and you'll officially be part of our team. Brad hesitated, his thoughts drifting to Lily and the way her smile could light up even the darkest corners of his heart. Could he really give all that up for this soulless world? Can I sleep on it before signing anything? He asked, surprising himself with his own hesitation. Of course, Dr. Collins replied, clearly taken aback. Take your time. Thanks, I will, Brad murmured, clutching the paperwork as if it were a lifeline. He couldn't shake the feeling that his decision would determine not just his future, but the very person he wanted to become. Say, Brad, one of the surgeons called out as he exited the building. Why don't you join us for drinks later? We'll show you the perks of being in our league. Maybe another time, Brad responded without conviction. His mind was already in Pine Haven, and his heart, he realized, was with Lily. Brad unlocked the door to his apartment, sighing with relief at the silence within. He tossed the contract folder on the kitchen counter and grabbed a water bottle from the fridge, settling onto his stiff leather couch. Just as he took his first sip, a loud knock sounded at the door. Brad groaned. He knew that imperious rhythm. He opened the door to find his father standing there, impeccably dressed, as always, in a tailored suit. Bradley, there you are. Aren't you going to invite your old man in? His father swept past Brad into the apartment. Nice to see you too, Dad, Brad said dryly. To what do I owe the pleasure? His father waved a hand airily. I heard about your promotion. His father strode into the apartment without waiting for an invitation. We're going out to celebrate tonight. I've already booked us a table at Le Bernardin. Wait, what? Dad, I haven't even signed the paperwork yet. Ah, don't worry about that. His father waved the concern away. It's a done deal. You'll sign it soon enough. We have to mark this occasion properly. Brad sighed inwardly, knowing there was no use arguing with his father once he had made up his mind. He reluctantly agreed, dreading the extravagant evening that lay ahead of him. Great, get ready, we leave in half an hour. And with that, his father disappeared back into the hallway, leaving Brad to hurriedly pull together something presentable to wear. As they arrived at Le Bernardin, Brad braced himself for an evening of fine dining and overpriced wine. However, Nothing could have prepared him for the sight that greeted him when he entered the upscale restaurant. There, seated at their reserved table, was Amberly, his ex-girlfriend who he had definitively broken up with weeks ago. Amberly, Brad stammered, his shock evident. What are you doing here? Your father invited me, she replied sweetly, batting her eyelashes at him. He thought it would be nice for me to join you on this special night. Isn't that great, son? His father chimed in, oblivious to Brad's discomfort. I figured your girlfriend should be here to celebrate your success. Ex-girlfriend, Dad, Brad corrected through gritted teeth. We broke up a while ago. Ah, uh, well, water under the bridge, his father said dismissively. Come on, sit down and let's enjoy this meal. Isn't this place divine? Amberly cooed, running her fingers down his arm. Oh, look, there's the Vanderveers at that table. Such an exclusive crowd. Brad clenched his jaw missing Lily desperately. He could imagine her laughing at the absurdity of it all, her bright smile cutting through the pretension. As the first course arrived, Brad's father launched into a monologue about the importance of networking, name-dropping influential contacts, and prominent families with shameless ease. And after the charity gala with the Cokes, I closed the biggest real estate deal of my career. You see, Bradley, it's all about who you know. Right, Dad. Brad muttered, 
moving away from Amberly's hand, inching up his thigh. Speaking of which, his father continued, you should meet Dr. Worthington. Brilliant man, just got a brand new yacht. We're going sailing next weekend. Why don't you join us? Sounds great. Brad forced a tight smile, his mind drifting to Pine Haven, the cozy medical clinic, the friendly faces, and most of all, Lily. Lily, who valued people over status, who didn't need fancy trappings to be happy. Bradley, are you even listening? His father snapped him back to reality. I'm telling you how to enjoy your newfound success. Sorry, Dad. But as he picked at the opulent dishes in front of him, Brad couldn't help but feel a growing sense of certainty. This life, the one his father wanted for him, wasn't the one he wanted for himself. All the wealth and status in the world couldn't compare to the happiness he'd found in Pine Haven. Brad speared a piece of truffle-drenched scallop with his fork, the rich aroma overpowering his senses. He chewed slowly, attempting to find pleasure in the taste, but it felt hollow and excessive. Can you believe they're discontinuing the fall line already? Amberly chattered on, her eyes wide with feigned shock. I mean, I barely had time to wear my new designer boots. Uh-huh. Brad mumbled, nodding absentmindedly, as Amberly's words washed over him like white noise. Her voice seemed so out of place in the noisy restaurant, a reminder of why he had ended their relationship in the first place. He glanced around at the other patrons, each dressed in expensive suits or sparkling gowns, and couldn't help but feel a pang of longing for Lily's easy smile and no-nonsense attire. The realization hit him like a ton of bricks. This life was not what he wanted anymore. Actually, Dad, Brad interrupted, gathering his courage. There's something I need to tell you both. His father arched an eyebrow, setting down his champagne flute. What is it, son? I've decided not to take the position, Brad announced, his voice firm. The silence that followed was deafening. His father stared at him, eyes narrowing, as if trying to determine whether this was some kind of joke. You must be joking. His father's voice was low dangerous, but Brad held his ground. No, I'm not. I've realized that there's more to life than money and status. More to life? His father scoffed, his face reddening. You ungrateful fool. Do you have any idea how many people would kill for the opportunity you're throwing away? Let him be, Amberly cooed, attempting to defuse the situation. He's just confused. Confused? Brad snapped. No, I'm not confused. I know what's important to me now. Then enlighten us, his father demanded, his voice rising. Community, Brad replied, his heart pounding. Helping others, being surrounded by people who care about more than themselves. And love, Dad. Real, genuine love. His father shook his head, a bitter laugh escaping his lips. Love won't pay the bills, son, but fine. Throw away your future. See if I care. Around them, the restaurant's chatter seemed to fade into the background, as if everyone was holding their breath, waiting for the final showdown between father and son. Status and money aren't everything, Dad, Brad shouted, unable to contain his frustration any longer. I've seen the other side of life, and I want something more meaningful. Meaningful? His father scoffed glaring at him with disdain as he continued to berate his son. You're giving up a prestigious position for some small-town daydream? This is absurd. Calmly, Brad held his ground. It's not the path I want. My priorities have changed. He tossed his napkin on the table. Leaving his outraged father and distraught Amberly without a backwards glance, Brad stepped out into the night, gulping the fresh air. After calling for a car to bring him back to his apartment, he took a deep breath and texted his official resignation to the chief of surgery at the hospital. The response was swift, a stunned message that read, are you sure about this, Dr. Burrell? More certain than I've ever been, he replied. Thoughts of Lily filled his mind as he rode back to his apartment in silence, her infectious laughter and warm, caring nature, a stark contrast to the shallow world he'd just left. He knew it wouldn't be easy, but he was willing to do whatever it took to win her heart and build a life together in Pine Haven even if he had to spend his days wiping down tables at Java Joy, after his temporary role at the clinic was finished, it would be worth it for her. Chapter 20 Lily walked into the clinic, her heart heavy with thoughts of Brad. 
The cold, gray winter day outside mirrored her mood. As she hung up her coat and turned towards the reception desk, a familiar voice made her start. There stood Dr. Halston, her auburn hair falling in wisps from its bun as she juggled a stuffed diaper bag and baby carrier. The tiny newborn nestled against her chest, sound asleep. Dr. Halston! Lily rushed over, eyes wide. I thought you were taking more time off. Oh, I'm just filling in for a day while Dr. Burrell is out, Dr. Halston replied, rocking slightly from side to side. I won't be back officially until after the holidays, but it sure feels good to be back in the clinic. Looks like you have your hands full, Lily remarked as she took her seat behind the reception desk. How are you managing with the little one? Let's just say it's been an adventure so far. Dr. Halston chuckled, bouncing her baby gently. But we're making it work. The baby fussed, rooting against the doctor's shirt as a patient approached the desk. Oh, goodness, sorry about that. Dr. Halston flushed, patting the infant's back. She turned to the patient. Morning, Betty. Let's head on back. Lily smiled as they shuffled to the exam room, baby in tow. It warmed her heart to see her tough-as-nails mentor so softened, but that warm feeling faded as she remembered why Dr. Halston had returned early. With Brad gone, the clinic needed help. He really was leaving Pine Haven for good. Throughout the morning, the staff watched in a mix of awe and amusement as Dr. Halston attempted to balance her duties as a doctor and a new mother. In between patients, she would coo softly to the baby, eliciting a chorus of awe from everyone present. Who knew Dr. Halston had such a soft side? Jenna whispered, leaning in conspiratorially to Lily. Motherhood changes people, Lily mused, watching as Dr. Halston fumbled with a stethoscope while trying not to disturb the sleeping infant. The humor in the situation brought a moment of levity to her otherwise solemn thoughts. Hey, Dr. Halston said suddenly, turning towards Lily and Jenna. I appreciate the peanut gallery commentary, but if one of you could grab me an extra set of hands, that'd be great. The two women exchanged sheepish grins. Of course, Dr. Halston, Jenna replied, jumping up into action. The afternoon continued to be a whirlwind of activity as Dr. Halston navigated through her appointments with the baby in tow. At one point, she was in the middle of examining a patient when her baby stirred restlessly and suddenly spit up all over his neatly pressed shirt. Good heavens, the patient gasped, recoiling in horror at the mess on his chest. Dr. Halston's face turned beet red as she tried to wipe the spit up off him with one hand, still holding her baby with the other. I'm so sorry, Mr. Trotter. This is not exactly protocol. Never thought I'd be baptized by a baby in a doctor's office, he muttered, clearly trying to find the humor in the situation despite his dismay. Again, my sincerest apologies, Dr. Halston said, finally managing to clean him up as best she could before continuing with the examination. By late afternoon, it was evident that Dr. Halston was struggling to balance her dual responsibilities. Her once pristine white coat was damp with leaking breast milk, and her hair was escaping its usually immaculate bun, making her look frazzled and disheveled. Lily watched her rush around the clinic, torn between admiration and concern. She knew how much her mentor loved being a mother, but it was clear that combining that role with her professional life was taking its toll. Oops, we had a little accident, Dr. Halston grimaced. Lily, could you please hold him while I grab the diaper bag? Of course. Lily took the screaming infant, bouncing him gently. Shh, it's okay, little guy. As she comforted the newborn, Lily was struck by a pang of longing so intense it stole her breath. In that moment, she knew, as painful as it would be to leave Pine Haven, it would be even more agonizing to lose her chance with Brad. She had to tell him how she felt and hope it was enough for him to stay. I can take him back now, Dr. Halston said, approaching the front desk. But she looked so exhausted that it was a wonder she was still on two feet. I've got him. You focus on the patients. The baby nuzzled against Lily's chest, eyelids fluttering as he drifted to sleep. Lily gently swayed back and forth, filled with tenderness for the tiny being. She found herself picturing another baby in her arms, 
one with Bradley's warm brown eyes and her blonde hair. A perfect combination of the two of them. Lily blinked back tears, overcome with how fiercely she missed him. She wanted nothing more than to do this with him, tag team through the chaos of parenthood together. Maybe she could still have that with him, even if it meant leaving Pine Haven behind. As much as the thought made Lily's chest ache, Bradley was worth any sacrifice. She would tell him she'd move to the city with him if that's what it took to be together. The baby let out a little sigh, pulling Lily from her swirling thoughts. She cradled the infant closer, hoping her mentor hadn't noticed the tears in her eyes. Dr. Halston gave her a knowing look as she nodded. Thank you, Lily. He seems to really like you. Lily just smiled, heart full of bittersweet hope. After ushering her final patient of the day out, Dr. Halston collapsed into a chair with a weary sigh. Lily's heart went out to her mentor. The unflappable physician looked more flapped than ever before. Lily perched on the desk beside her. Rough first day back? Dr. Halston gave a wry chuckle, smoothing back loose wisps of hair. I may have been a bit overzealous in my estimation of my multitasking abilities. She nodded gratefully as Lily handed her a cup of water. It's only your first day. You'll get the hang of it. The doctor's eyes misted over. Thank you for all your help today. I don't know what I would have done without you. Lily squeezed her shoulder. It was nothing, really. I might have jumped back into this too fast, she admitted with a weary laugh. But I really appreciate you helping with the baby today. It would have been a disaster without you. It was my pleasure, Lily said sincerely, seeing the tough-as-nails doctor so soft and vulnerable as a new mom had been touching. That's what we do here. We help each other out. Dr. Halston nodded, a hint of tears in her eyes. That's exactly why I came back. The community here, it's so special. Lily felt a pang in her heart, thinking of the community she'd be leaving behind if she went with Brad. This clinic had come together to support Dr. Halston, even when things got awkward and messy with the baby. It was a reminder of what Lily loved so much about Pine Haven and what she would miss if she left. But Brad was worth any sacrifice. She had to take the chance if she wanted a life with him. Lily bid the doctor good night, feeling bittersweet but hopeful as she stepped out into the cold night air. This town meant everything to her. But maybe her happy ending was waiting somewhere else. Lily drove home slowly, taking in the twinkling Christmas lights and decorations that adorned the small shops along Main Street. She felt a pang, realizing this might be one of the last times she got to appreciate the charm of her hometown during the holidays if she left with Brad. When she got home, Lily made herself a mug of hot cocoa and curled up on the couch, emotions swelling inside her. Lil, you okay? Her sister Sophia asked, coming to sit beside her. Lily shook her head, tears filling her eyes. I've been thinking that if Bradley asks me to move to the city with him, I'm going to say yes. Oh, honey. Sophia rubbed her back soothingly. I know, I know, Lily cried. This town means everything to me. You and mom and dad are here. The clinic, Dr. Halston. Everything I know is here. She took a shaky breath. But I... I'm falling in love with Brad, as crazy as that sounds, and if leaving is the only way to be with him, I have to try. I can't let him just walk out of my life without even trying to make it work. Sophia nodded understandingly. It doesn't sound crazy at all. Truthfully, we've all seen this coming since he first arrived in town. Sometimes two people are just meant to be together. Lily sniffled, wiping at her nose with the back of her hand. I know how hard this must be for you. Your home and your heart are both pulling you in different directions. Sophia squeezed Lily's hand. But listen to me. Whatever you decide, whichever path you choose, it will work out. You're strong and you're brave, and you'll find your happy ending either way. I just know it. Lily wiped her eyes on her sleeve, managing a small smile. Thanks, Soph. I needed to hear that. She took a sip of cocoa feeling the warmth spread through her. Sophia was right. Wherever her path led, as long as Brad was by her side, everything would be okay. 
Chapter 21 Brad burst through the clinic doors, a grin plastered on his face. He was finally back in Pine Haven after a few days in the city finalizing things. Back to Lily. He scanned the waiting room, but she wasn't at the front desk. That was disappointing, but he couldn't wait to see her reaction when he told her his news. Lily, he called out. A shuffle and a crash sounded from the back room. His grin grew wider. Lily appeared in the doorway, face flushed. Brad, you're back. Before he could react, she threw her arms around him in a tight hug. He breathed in the scent of her shampoo and relished the feel of her in his arms. She pulled back first, tucking a loose strand of blonde hair behind her ear. How was the city? Oh, you know, loud, busy, dirty. He shrugged, not Pine Haven. She laughed. Well, I'm glad you made it back in time for Christmas. My parents are hosting a big holiday dinner tomorrow night, and they'd love to have you join us. They would? I would. She smiled and stepped closer. Well, in that case, I'd love to. <laughs> Lily stepped up on her toes and placed a quick kiss on his lips. Too quick. As the hours ticked by, Brad could hardly contain his eagerness for the festivities. He imagined a cozy gathering around the Christmas tree, laughter filling the room as they exchanged gifts and stories. He couldn't wait to share his future with Lily, to finally tell her that he was here to stay. The following evening, Brad pulled up to the cozy Matthews home, nestled amongst the pines. Twinkling Christmas lights lined the eaves, and a wreath hung on the red door. He smoothed his sweater and took a deep breath before knocking. Brad, you made it, Lily beamed her eyes lighting up as she opened the door for him. Come on in. Thanks, he replied, stepping into the festively decorated home. Your place looks amazing. Wait until you see the tree, she said, pulling him gently by his hand. Mom goes all out every year. He stepped inside the warmth, admiring the full holiday splendor, garlands strung on the banister, stockings hanging above the fireplace, and a massive Christmas tree glittering in the corner. Brad, these are my parents, John and Helen Matthews. Lily introduced him as they entered the warmly lit living room. Her parents welcomed him kindly, and he felt an immediate sense of belonging in their presence. Nice to meet you both, Brad said, shaking their hands. Thank you for having me. Any friend of Lily's is always welcome, Helen assured him, her smile warm and genuine. Just then, the front door opened, and Ethan and Sophia arrived, bundled up against the cold and carrying dishes for the feast. Greetings and hugs were exchanged before they made their way toward the dining room. Ah, the final ingredients for our Christmas feast have arrived, John exclaimed, clapping his hands together. Let's get these in the oven and pour some eggnog. As they all gathered around the kitchen island, sipping eggnog and nibbling on appetizers, small talk filled the air. Ethan shared stories from his latest construction project while Sophia playfully scolded him for nearly dropping a tray of cookies earlier that day. Hey, in my defense, those cookies were dangerously delicious, Ethan insisted, earning a laugh from the group. Can't argue with that, Sophia conceded, rolling her eyes affectionately. The more they talked and laughed, the more Brad enjoyed the evening. The warmth of Lily's family, their laughter, and the festive atmosphere felt like pieces of a puzzle that he hadn't realized was missing from his life. And now that he had found it, he couldn't imagine ever letting it go. As the meal neared completion, Helen orchestrated a symphony of pots and pans, while John carved the turkey with precision. The heavenly aroma of roasted vegetables, stuffing, and freshly baked rolls filled the air, promising a delicious feast ahead. Almost time to eat, Lily whispered to Brad, her excitement contagious. You're in for a real treat. From the smells alone, I have no doubt. Hey, before we head into the dining room, do you want to see my old room? Lily asked, tugging on Brad's arm. It's still decorated, just as it was when I was a teenager. Lead the way. Brad grinned, intrigued by the prospect of seeing a glimpse into Lily's past. They climbed the stairs, and Lily pushed open a door to reveal a cozy bedroom adorned with soft pastel colors. Evening light streamed through gauzy curtains, casting a warm glow over the space. A collection of stuffed animals occupied one corner, and posters of boy bands from years gone by lined the walls. Brad grinned, picturing a teenage Lily listening to music and chatting on the phone with friends. He walked over to examine the knickknacks on her dresser. 
I like getting this peek into your past, he said. It feels like another lifetime ago, Lily replied, sitting on the edge of the bed. It's perfect, Brad assured her, unable to tear his eyes away from the room that held so many memories for the woman he was falling for. The moment felt ripe for him to share his news about staying in Pine Haven, but before he could find the right words, Lily chimed in with a question that caught him off guard. Tell me more about the city, she said, her eyes sparkling with curiosity. What's it like living there? Do you think someone like me could fit in? Brad hesitated, momentarily thrown by her sudden interest in his urban life. Was she considering moving to the city? Did she want to leave Pine Haven behind? Uh, well, he began, trying to gather his thoughts. The city can be exciting, fast-paced. There's always something happening, but it can also be overwhelming at times. I think you could fit in anywhere. You have this way of brightening up any room you walk into. Thanks. She smiled warmly, but the questions that lingered in her eyes made him wonder what was truly going on in her mind. Something was off, but he didn't want to push her. He decided to change the subject to something more lighthearted. Speaking of fitting in, have you seen the holiday sweaters your parents are wearing? Brad chuckled. I didn't know reindeer could look so fashionable. Lily laughed, the sound of it easing the tension between them. Yeah, my mom always goes all out with the holiday attire. Come on, we should head back downstairs before they start wondering if we've run off together. Right, Brad chuckled, following her out of the room. As they made their way back downstairs, Brad couldn't shake the feeling that something was still bothering Lily. He vowed to himself that he would find out what it was and make everything right again. As the evening wore on, a layer of tension seemed to inch its way in between him and Lily. He longed to share his decision to stay in Pine Haven with her hoping it would bridge the gap he sensed between them. But every time he thought about presenting her with the gift and telling her the news, he hesitated. Something was holding him back. Brad, are you all right? Lily asked, touching his arm gently as they sat at the dinner table. You seem a bit distant. Sorry, he replied sheepishly, offering her a small smile. I guess I'm just a little lost in thought. Anything you want to talk about? She prodded gently. Maybe later, he said evasively, his heart racing at the idea of revealing his secret. Let's just enjoy dinner for now. Throughout the meal, the conversation flowed easily among the group, filled with laughter and lighthearted banter. Yet, despite the festive atmosphere, no opportune moment had presented itself for him to make his announcement. It didn't feel right in front of all these people. He wanted it to be more special, more intimate, a conversation for him and the woman he was falling in love with but his thoughts drifted back to her questions about the city. Lily had mentioned nursing school. Could it be that she was ready to move on with her life? Maybe she didn't want to stay in Pine Haven at all. The only thing he knew for sure was that he wanted to be where Lily was, wherever that may be. As dinner came to an end and the others busied themselves with dessert preparations, Brad knew he had to find the courage to give Lily the gift he'd brought her and ask about where she saw herself and them. This was their chance to start building a future together, and he couldn't let it slip away. Eyes darting around the room, he searched for the perfect moment to take Lily aside and reveal his intentions. Every time he thought he'd found it, however, something seemed to get in the way. An interruption, a joke that needed laughing at, or Lily herself, who remained blissfully unaware of his internal struggle. His heart pounding, Brad watched the night slip away, each opportunity to share his news seeming to vanish into thin air. The weight of his unspoken words only grew heavier, leaving him feeling more and more trapped within the confines of his own silence. As the evening drew to a close, and it was time for him to leave, Brad knew he had to act or risk losing this precious chance forever. With a deep breath, he took Lily's hand and pressed the wrapped gift into her palm silently praying that she would understand the love and hope it represented. I wanted to give you this. Aw, oh, Brad, you didn't have to get me anything, Lily replied, her eyes shining with gratitude. I wanted to. Will you open it? Brad urged, hoping she would understand the significance of the horse figurine inside, a symbol of their shared dream to one day live in a country home like the ranch they had visited together. But instead of opening the gift, Lily looked down at the box, 
then back up at him, her eyes filled with warmth. I can't do that, silly. It's not Christmas yet. I will open it first thing in the morning, though. I promise. It'll be just like waiting to see what Santa brought. She laughed softly, completely unaware of the message Brad had hoped to convey through the gift. All right, Brad agreed reluctantly, feeling a pang of disappointment as he handed her the unopened box. I'll see you at work on Monday? Definitely, Lily confirmed, her smile still radiant even as she unwittingly left Brad's heart heavy with confusion. As Brad walked away from Lily's parents' house, the mix of emotions swirling within him was almost overwhelming. He replayed the evening in his mind, trying to pinpoint where he had gone wrong and what he could have done differently. Chapter 22 Lily pulled into the parking lot of the medical clinic, her stomach in knots. That Christmas meal had been so weird with Brad. She thought they were really connecting. But he totally brushed her off when she started asking about the city. It was like he didn't even consider the possibility of her going with him. Should she just ask him if she can come? She was a grown woman, so she could do whatever she wanted. But what she really wanted was for Brad to ask her to come back to the city with him. What she really wanted was Brad. Get it together, she muttered to herself, forcing a smile as she stepped out of her car and locked the door. Lily stopped short of the front entrance when she saw Ethan up on a ladder, fiddling with the clinic sign. Ethan, what are you doing here? she asked. He glanced down and grinned. Oh, hey, Lily, just making some repairs. This old sign has seen better days. She shielded her eyes from the morning sun. It looks fine to me. That's because you only see it during the day, Ethan said. At night, half the lights don't even turn on. Figured I'd fix it up before Dr. Halston gets here. Lily nodded slowly. Dr. Halston. As in, not Brad. Her heart sank a little. Well, aren't you handy to have around? She joked. Ethan chuckled. That's what Sophia tells me. Lily smiled. Her sister was so happy with Ethan. They were perfect together. She hoped that someday she'd find a love like theirs. Shaking the thoughts away, she tugged open the front doors, the cold metal handle biting into the palm of her hand. The waiting room was empty except for Maggie, who was sitting in one of the chairs, leafing through a magazine. Lily frowned in surprise. Maggie, what are you doing here? Oh, you know, just getting my annual checkup. Maggie's smile was a little too wide, her voice a little too cheerful, and Lily definitely didn't remember seeing her name on the schedule. Are you sure your appointment is today? It is now. I moved it up. Hmm. Seemed strange, but Lily hadn't had enough coffee yet to think about whatever Maggie was up to. That girl was kind of a wild card sometimes. Lily gave Maggie a curious look, but decided not to press the issue. There were more important things on her mind this morning. Just then, Jenna popped out from one of the exam rooms. Morning, Lily, she said in an unusually chipper voice. Before Lily could respond, Dion emerged from the back, pushing a cart stacked with medical supplies. Hey, girl, you're just in time, he said with a wink. Now Lily was really suspicious. The whole staff was acting bizarre today. She sidled up to the front desk next to Maggie. All right, what's going on here? She whispered. Everyone's being weird today. Maggie stifled a giggle. Just wait till Dr. Halston gets here. She wants to tell you herself. Tell me what? Lily pleaded, but Maggie just smiled and shook her head. You'll see. At that moment, the front door opened and Dr. Halston walked in, followed closely by Brad. Lily's pulse quickened at the sight of him. Good morning, everyone, Dr. Halston said warmly. She turned to Lily with a twinkle in her eye. I have some wonderful news to share. Brad gave Lily a little smile, though she could detect a hint of nervousness in it. Dr. Halston gathered the staff around her. As you all know, I just had a baby boy a few months ago. She paused as everyone gave her their congratulations. 
I've been struggling with how to balance running the clinic and be a new mom at the same time, but after much thought, I've decided to step down as the primary physician here at the clinic. I want to focus on motherhood and spend more time with my son. The clinic staff looked at each other in surprise, not sure what to say. Everyone was sad to hear that Dr. Halston was leaving, but they were also happy for her decision. Lily's gaze flicked over to Brad, who was watching her with a thoughtful expression. Dr. Halston paused for a moment, allowing her news to sink in. But don't worry, she continued with a soft smile. I wanted to ensure the clinic was left in good hands before I go, and it is my pleasure to announce that Dr. Burl has agreed to take over as head physician. Lily's jaw dropped. She swung her gaze to Brad, who was studying her carefully. Dr. Halston kept talking, but Lily barely heard her over the rushing in her ears. Brad was staying? Here? In Pine Haven? The staff erupted into cheers and congratulations. Dr. Halston shook Brad's hand firmly, but Lily stayed frozen, overwhelmed with emotions. Brad cleared his throat. Thank you, Dr. Halston. I'm honored by your faith in me, he said, and I happily accept the position on one condition. Lily's breath caught. What condition could he possibly have? Brad looked at the staff gathered around. That this amazing team continues to work here. I wouldn't want to do this without you. His gaze lingered on Lily. Relief washed over her, followed by a swell of affection for Brad. He wanted the staff, her, to stay. Dion let out a whoop and Jenna clapped excitedly. Of course we'll stay, she said. Lily blinked back sudden tears. Brad was staying in Pinehaven, with her. She wanted to throw her arms around him, but settled for a tremulous smile. Brad met her gaze, his eyes softening. He said something quietly to Dr. Holston before stepping over to Lily. I know this is sudden, he said gently, but Pinehaven has really started to feel like home. And I realized there are certain things here I'm not ready to leave behind just yet. He smiled at her meaningfully and Lily's heart fluttered. Then, acting on impulse, she threw her arms around Brad in a hug. Thank you, she whispered. I'm so happy for you. And she realized she truly meant it. This was exactly where Brad belonged. Lily pulled back from the hug, her cheeks flush. Brad's eyes were tender as he looked down at her. I know I was hesitant about staying at first, he said. But now, I can't imagine being anywhere else. He brushed a strand of hair from her face, his touch sending tingles down Lily's spine. Especially if it means I get to be near you. Lily's breath caught in her throat. Was this really happening? Lily, I... Brad hesitated, seeming uncharacteristically nervous. I think I'm falling for you. Warmth flooded through Lily's entire body. Unable to form words, she simply gazed up at him. Brad went on. I tried to fight it, but you've completely stolen my heart. He cupped her face in his hands. I know I don't deserve you, but if you'll have me, I'd like to stay in Pine Haven. With you. Joy surged within Lily. She'd never imagined Brad could want the same thing she did, a life here, together. Yes, she whispered tears in her eyes. I want that too. He tenderly brushed a strand of hair from her face. Good, because I plan to shower you with affection every day from now on. Lily laughed, her heart swelling. She traced her fingers down his chest. Well, I certainly won't complain about that. Oh yeah? Brad murmured, his voice low. He leaned in, bringing his lips tantalizingly close to hers. Lily's breath caught. She nodded, her eyes fluttering shut in anticipation. When their lips met, it was like fireworks going off inside her. The kiss was soft and searching at first, both reveling in the newness. Then it deepened, filled with longing and promise. Lily was dizzy when they finally broke apart, both breathless. Brad's eyes were dark with desire. Wow, he said huskily. If it's like that every time, I'm in big trouble. 
Lily bit her lip, cheeks flushed. I'd say we're both in trouble now, she whispered. I know this is fast, he murmured. But when you know, you know. I love you, Lily. Lily's heart soared. I love you too, she whispered. Brad grinned and lifted her up, spinning her around. Lily's laughter pealed through the clinic lobby. Over Brad's shoulder, she could see Maggie dabbing at her eyes with a tissue while Dr. Halston looked on approvingly. Jenna and Dion exchanged excited glances, and she noticed Ethan and even Sophia had snuck in during the excitement too. It seemed that everyone was in on this little surprise. Lily tucked herself against Brad's chest with a happy sigh. She didn't know what the future held, but she knew they would face it together. Pine Haven was where they both belonged, where their love had blossomed. And Lily couldn't wait to see what adventure came next. Epilogue Snowflakes danced in the air, twinkling like fairy lights as they drifted down to coat the charming town square. The soft crunch of snow underfoot provided a gentle rhythm to their stroll as Brad and Lily walked hand in hand toward the new bakery that had just opened. She tilted her head back, letting the fat snowflakes land on her cheeks and squeezed Brad's hand. It's so beautiful, Lily said with a contented sigh. Brad smiled down at her. Not as beautiful as you, he said, pulling her in close. She laughed brushing snowflakes from his sandy hair. I have a confession to make, he said, his breath tickling her ear. That horse figurine I gave you for Christmas? It wasn't just some random gift. He hesitated, grinning nervously. I wanted it to be a symbol of the future I hoped we could have together. Lily turned to face him, but I thought, I know, I should have explained it that night. But after you asked about the city, I wasn't sure you wanted to stay in Pine Haven anymore. Or be with me. Lily touched his cheek. Of course I want to stay, as long as you're here. Brad's eyes softened. Well, it looks like the future is ours then. He drew her in for a lingering kiss. Lily smiled against Brad's lips, then pulled back to look into his eyes. You know, if being with you meant moving to the city, I would have done it. Brad laughed. And take you away from Pine Haven? Never. He tucked a strand of blonde hair behind her ear. Let's settle down right here instead. We'll find a little land just outside town, build a cozy house with a big porch, get a couple dogs, let some chickens run free. Lily's heart swelled at the image. And children? Absolutely. Brad's eyes twinkled. As many happy, free-range kids as you want. Joy bubbled up in Lily's chest. She threw her arms around Brad's neck, kissing him deeply. When they finally broke apart, Brad grinned. Shall we pick out a wedding cake while we're here? Lily swatted his shoulder playfully, though she couldn't hide the giant smile on her face. Maggie had been right. Lily's Prince Charming did walk right into this town and sweep her off her feet, and she never wanted to touch the ground again. They paused outside the bakery, its large front window revealing an interior glowing with warmth. Lily's eyes widened. I can't believe it's finally opened. I've been waiting weeks. Well, shall we? Brad opened the door with a flourish, and a bell tinkled overhead to announce their arrival. The scents of sugar, cinnamon, and rising dough swirled around them instantly, as comforting as a warm blanket. Hmm, something smells heavenly in here, Lily breathed. The interior was even more charming than the exterior. Display cases framed the perimeter, filled with rows of glistening fruit tarts, chocolate-dipped madeleines, and other decadent treats. In the center, Sophia, Ethan, Maggie, and Eric were already gathered around a cloth-covered table laden with slices of cake. There you two are, Sophia called out with a smile. We were about to start without you. And miss out on cake tasting? Never. Lily squeezed Brad's hand before releasing it to give her sister a quick hug. I still can't believe you're getting married, she said. It seems like just yesterday we were braiding dandelions into flower crowns and planning our fantasy weddings. Sophia laughed. I know, 
but I'm happier than I ever imagined I could be. She shared an adoring look with Ethan that made Lily's heart melt. After everything her sister had been through, she deserved this joy. Well, I can't wait to meet the genius behind these creations. Lily gestured to the cakes and confections around them. Who's the new owner? That would be me. Lily turned to see a slender man with warm brown eyes and a dusting of flour on his apron emerge from the kitchen. He extended a hand. Sebastian Walsh, at your service. But please, call me Bastian. Lily shook his hand. I'm Lily. This place is incredible. Pinehaven is so lucky to have you and your talents. Bastian smiled modestly. That's kind of you to say. I'm the lucky one. I've always dreamed of opening my own bakery in a charming small town just like this. As he and Lily chatted, Sophia herded everyone to the table. Come on, let's dig in before Maggie eats it all. Hey, Maggie protested around a mouthful of red velvet cake. I'm just making sure to sample each one thoroughly. Eric rolled his eyes as he watched Maggie enthusiastically devour another bite of cake. Well, I'm sure Bastion appreciates you sampling half his inventory. Maggie shot him a glare. No one asked for your opinion, Eric. Hey now, let's not fight. Bastion raised his hands diplomatically. There's plenty to go around. Although, he turned to Maggie with a grin. I do appreciate your enthusiasm. Please have as much as you'd like. Maggie beamed under his attention. Why, thank you. It's important we find the perfect cake for Sophia and Ethan's wedding, after all. Eric crossed his arms, his jaw tightening slightly. Yes, we wouldn't want Sophia and Ethan's special day ruined by subpar cake now, would we? Lily hid a smile behind her hand. Eric's jealousy was written all over his face, even if he'd rather eat nails than admit he had a thing for Maggie. She made a mental note to enlist Sophia's help playing matchmaker later. For now, she wrapped an arm around Brad and reached for a piece of chocolate cake, perfectly content to enjoy the playful banter and easy warmth of the group. After so many lonely years, she finally felt at home. Mmm, this red velvet is heavenly, Maggie said, closing her eyes in delight. Lily nodded, savoring a bite of rich chocolate cake. I know, they're all so good. I don't know how Sophia and Ethan will choose just one. Well, the groom's cake has to be chocolate, obviously. Brad chuckled. Obviously, Lily laughed. Ethan would disown us all if it wasn't. Eric leaned back in his chair, observing the conversation with a slight smirk. I don't know. The lemon cake has quite the tang to it. Seems fitting for our happy couple. Maggie shot him a look. No one asked you, Mr. Sarcasm. Ouch, that stings, Rojo. Maggie rolled her eyes dramatically. You'll live, unfortunately. Lily and Brad exchanged an amused glance at their antics. Some things never changed. Lily sighed happily as she snuggled into Brad's side. Love is definitely in the air these days. I bet Maggie will be the next one swept off her feet. She gave her friend a playful nudge. Maggie's eyes darted briefly to Eric before she let out a nervous laugh. Who, me? No way. I'm happy being single. Yet her eyes held a flicker of something more. I mean, living with someone else, having to share a bathroom and closets? No thanks. She laughed again, but it sounded forced. Eric leaned forward, resting his arms on the table. Don't worry, I wouldn't wish that torture on anyone either. Can you imagine dealing with your messes every day? He smirked as Maggie's eyes flashed. Lily had to cover her mouth to hide her grin. There was definitely some chemistry there. At least I know how to have fun, Maggie shot back. Unlike some boring stick in the muds I could mention. Hey now, I know how to have fun, Eric protested. Mm-hmm, I'll believe that when I see it. Lily decided it was time to intervene before it got out of hand. You two are hilarious, she said, patting Maggie's hand. I'm just saying you never know what life will bring. Look at me and Brad. She gazed up at him adoringly while he dropped a kiss to her forehead. All I know is I've never been happier being here with all of you. Her voice caught with emotion. My heart is just overflowing.
Brad hugged her close as Sophia reached over to squeeze her hand, blinking back sudden tears. Mine too, Sophia said thickly. We're so lucky to have found our way back home. Maggie cleared her throat and tried to lighten the mood. All right, enough with the sappiness. We've got more cake to eat. She picked up her fork with gusto and took a huge bite of the chocolate raspberry cake, closing her eyes in bliss. Oh, wow, this is incredible, she mumbled through the mouthful. Eric chuckled and handed her a napkin. Here, you've got a little something. He gently wiped away a smudge of chocolate from the corner of her mouth. Maggie froze at his touch, a pretty blush spreading over her cheeks. Lily hid a smile behind her own forkful of cake. Oh yes, there were definitely sparks between those two. Now, if only they would stop being stubborn and admit it. As Sophia chatted about potential wedding plans, Lily tuned out and focused on Brad sitting beside her. Their legs were pressed together under the table, and he had one arm slung casually around the back of her chair. She still couldn't believe this handsome, caring man wanted to be with her. He could have any woman, yet he'd chosen a small-town girl who often put her foot in her mouth and was as awkward at times as an indie flick heroine. Her heart swelled with love and gratitude for his willingness to take a chance on her. She didn't know what the future held, but she knew they would face it together. They shared a secret smile before turning their attention back to Sophia's enthusiastic plans. As Lily looked around at everyone's friendly faces, she felt contentment wash over her like a warm blanket. This was what family was all about, sharing moments like this in which you realize that no matter what life threw your way, you were surrounded by people who loved you unconditionally. This has been Mending Hearts in Pine Haven, written by Laura Abbott. Production copyright 2024 by Laura Abbott.